The Book of Jubilees Prologue This is the history of the division of the days of the law and of the testimony, of the events of the years, of their weeks, of their jubilees, throughout all the years of the world, as the Lord spake to Moses on Mount Sinai when he went up to receive the tables of the law and of the commandment, according to the voice of God as he said unto him, Go up to the top of the mount. God's Revelation to Moses on Mount Sinai And it came to pass in the first year of the exodus of the children of Israel out of Egypt in the third month on the sixteenth day of the month, that God spake to Moses, saying, Come up to me on the mount, and I will give thee two tables of stone of the law and of the commandment, which I have written, that thou mayst teach them. And Moses went up into the mount of God, and the glory of the Lord abode on Mount Sinai, and a cloud overshadowed it six days. And he called to Moses on the seventh day, out of the midst of the cloud. And the appearance of the glory of the Lord was like a flaming fire on the top of the mount. And Moses was on the mount forty days and forty nights. And God taught him the earlier and the later history of the division of all the days of the law and of the testimony. And he said, Incline thine heart to every word which I shall speak to thee on this mount and write them in a book, in order that their generations may see how I have not forsaken them for all the evil which they have wrought in transgressing the covenant which I established between me and thee for their generations this day on Mount Sinai. And thus it will come to pass, when all these things come upon them, that they will recognize that I am more righteous than they in all their judgments and in all their actions, and they will recognize that I have been truly with them. And do thou write for thyself all these words which I declare unto thee this day. For I know their rebellion and their stiff neck, before I bring them into the land of which I swear to their fathers, to Abraham and to Isaac and to Jacob, saying, Unto your seed will I give a land flowing with milk and honey, and they will eat and be satisfied, and they will turn to strange gods, to gods which cannot deliver them from aught of their tribulation, and this witness shall be heard for a witness against them. For they will forget all my commandments, even all that I command them, and they will walk after the Gentiles, and after their uncleanness, and after their shame and will serve their gods, and these will prove unto them an offence, and a tribulation, and an affliction, and a snare, and many will perish, and they will be taken captive, and will fall into the hands of the enemy, because they have forsaken my ordinances, and my commandments, and the festivals of my covenant, and my sabbaths, and my holy place, which I have hallowed for myself in their midst, and my tabernacle, and my sanctuary, which I have hallowed for myself in the midst of the land, that I should set my name upon it, and that it should dwell there. And they will make to themselves high places and groves and graven images, and they will worship each his own graven image so as to go astray, and they will sacrifice their children to demons and to all the works of the error of their hearts. And I will send witnesses unto them, that I may witness against them, but they will not hear, and will slay the witnesses also, and they will persecute those who seek the law, and they will abrogate and change everything, so as to work evil before my eyes. And I shall hide my face from them, and I shall deliver them into the hand of the Gentiles for captivity, and for a prey, and for devouring and I shall remove them from the midst of the land, and I will scatter them amongst the Gentiles. And they will forget all my law and all my commandments and all my judgments, and will go astray as to new moons and Sabbaths and festivals and jubilees and ordinances. And after this they will turn to me from amongst the Gentiles, with all their heart and with all their soul and with all their strength. And I shall gather them from amongst the Gentiles, 
and they will seek me, so that I shall be found of them, when they seek me with all their heart and with all their soul. And I shall disclose to them abounding peace with righteousness, and I will plant them the plant of uprightness in the land with all my heart and with all my soul. And they will be for a blessing and not for a curse, and they will be the head and not the tail. And I shall build my sanctuary in their midst, and I shall dwell with them, and I shall be their God, and they will be my people in truth and righteousness, and I shall not forsake them nor fail them, for I am the Lord their God. And Moses fell on his face and prayed and said, O Lord my God, do not forsake thy people and thy inheritance so that they should wander in the error of their hearts, and do not deliver them over into the hands of their enemies, the Gentiles, lest they should rule over them and cause them to sin against thee. Let thy mercy, O Lord, be lifted up upon thy people, and create in them an upright spirit, and let not the spirit of Belial rule over them to accuse them before thee, and to ensnare them from all the paths of righteousness so that they may perish from before thy face. But they are thy people and thy inheritance, which thou hast delivered with thy great power from the hands of the Egyptians. Create in them a clean heart and a holy spirit, and let them not be ensnared in their sins from henceforth until eternity. And the Lord said unto Moses, I know their contrariness, and their thoughts, and their stiff nakedness, and they will not be obedient till they confess their own sin and the sin of their fathers. And after this, they will turn to me in all uprightness, and with all their heart, and with all their soul, and I shall circumcise the foreskin of their heart, and the foreskin of the heart of their seed and I shall create in them a holy spirit, and I shall cleanse them, so that they shall not turn away from me from that day unto eternity. And their souls will cleave to me and to all my commandments, and they will fulfill all my commandments. And I shall be their father, and they will be my children. And they will all be called children of the living God, And every angel and every spirit will know, yea, they will know that these are my children, and that I am their father in uprightness and righteousness, and that I love them. And do thou write down for thyself all these words which I declare unto thee on this mountain, the first and the last, which shall come to pass in all the divisions of the days in the law and in the testimony and in the weeks and the jubilees unto eternity, until I descend and dwell with them throughout eternity. God commands the angel to write. And he said to the angel of the presence, Write for Moses from the beginning of creation till my sanctuary has been built among them for all eternity. And the Lord will appear to the eyes of all, and all will know that I am the God of Israel and the Father of all the children of Jacob and King on Mount Zion for all eternity. And Zion and Jerusalem will be holy. And the angel of the presence who went before the camp of Israel took the tables of the divisions of the years from the time of creation, of the law and of the testimony of the weeks, of the jubilees, according to the individual years, according to all the number of the jubilees, according to the individual years, from the day of creation till the heavens and earth shall be renewed and all their creation according to the powers of the heaven and according to all the creation of the earth, until the sanctuary of the Lord shall be made in Jerusalem on Mount Zion, and all the luminaries be renewed for healing and for peace and for blessing for all the elect of Israel, and that thus it may be 
from that day and unto all the days of the earth. The angel dictates to Moses the primeval history, the creation of the world, and institution of the Sabbath. And the angel of the presence spake to Moses according to the word of the Lord, saying, Write the complete history of the creation, how in six days the Lord God finished all his works and all that he created, and kept Sabbath on the seventh day, and hallowed it for all ages, and appointed it as a sign for all his works. For on the first day he created the heavens which are above, and the earth and the waters, and all the spirits which serve before him, the angels of the presence, and the angels of sanctification, and the angels of the spirit of fire, and the angels of the spirit of the winds, and the angels of the spirit of the clouds, and of darkness, and of snow, and of hail, and of hoarfrost, and the angels of the voices, and of the thunder, and of the lightning, and the angels of the spirits of cold, and of heat, and of winter, and of spring, and of autumn, and of summer, and of all the spirits of his creatures which are in the heavens and on the earth. He created the abysses, and the darkness, eventide, and night, and the light, dawn, and day, which he hath prepared in the knowledge of his heart. And thereupon we saw his works, and praised him, and lauded before him on account of all his works. For seven great works did he create on the first day, and on the second day he created the firmament in the midst of the waters, and the waters were divided on that day. Half of them went up above, and half of them went down below the firmament that was in the midst over the face of the whole earth. And this was the only work God created on the second day. And on the third day he commanded the waters to pass from off the face of the whole earth into one place, and the dry land to appear. And the waters did so as he commanded them, and they retired from off the face of the earth into one place outside of this firmament. And the dry land appeared. And on that day he created for them all the seas according to their separate gathering places, and all the rivers, and the gatherings of the waters in the mountains, and on all the earth, and all the lakes, and all the dew of the earth, and the seed which is sown, and all sprouting things, and fruit-bearing trees, and trees of the wood, and the garden of Eden in Eden, and all plants after their kind. These four great works God created on the third day, and on the fourth day, he created the sun and the moon and the stars, and set them in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon all the earth, and to rule over the day and the night, and divide the light from the darkness. And God appointed the sun to be a great sign on the earth for days and for Sabbaths and for months and for feasts and for years and for Sabbaths of years and for jubilees and for all seasons of the years. And it divided the light from the darkness, and for prosperity, that all things may prosper, which shoot and grow on the earth. These three kinds he made on the fourth day. And on the fifth day he created great sea monsters in the depths of the waters, for these were the first things of flesh that were created by his hands, the fish, and everything that moves in the waters, and everything that flies, the birds, and all their kind. And the sun rose above them to prosper them, and above everything that was on the earth, everything that shoots out of the earth, and all fruit-bearing trees, and all flesh. These three kinds he created on the fifth day. And on the sixth day, he created all the animals of the earth, and all cattle, and everything that moves on the earth. And after all this, he created man. A man and a woman created he them, and gave him dominion over all that is upon the earth, and in the seas, and over everything that flies, and over beasts, and over cattle, 
and over everything that moves on the earth, and over the whole earth, and over all this he gave him dominion. And these four kinds he created on the sixth day. And there were all together two and twenty kinds. And he finished all his work on the sixth day, all that is in the heavens and on the earth, and in the seas, and in the abysses, and in the light, and in the darkness, and in everything. And he gave us a great sign, the Sabbath day, that we should work six days, but keep Sabbath on the seventh day from all work. And all the angels of the presence, and all the angels of sanctification, these two great classes, he hath hidden us to keep the Sabbath with him in heaven and on earth. And he said unto us, Behold, I will separate unto myself a people from among all the peoples, and these will keep the Sabbath day. And I will sanctify them unto myself as my people, and will bless them, as I have sanctified the Sabbath day, and do sanctify it unto myself, even so shall I bless them. And they will be my people, and I shall be their God. And I have chosen the seed of Jacob from amongst all that I have seen, and I have written him down as my firstborn son, and have sanctified him unto myself for ever and ever. And I will teach them the Sabbath day, that they may keep Sabbath thereon from all work. And thus he created therein a sign in accordance with which they should keep the Sabbath with us on the seventh day, to eat and to drink, and to bless him who hath created all things, as he hath blessed and sanctified unto himself a peculiar people above all peoples, and that they should keep Sabbath together with us. And he caused his commands to ascend as a sweet savour acceptable before him all the days. There were two and twenty heads of mankind from Adam to Jacob, and two and twenty kinds of work which were made until the seventh day. This is blessed and holy. And the former also is blessed and holy. And this one serves with that one for sanctification and blessing. And to this Jacob and his seed it was granted that they should always be the blessed and holy ones of the first testimony and law, even as he had sanctified and blessed the Sabbath day on the seventh day. He created heaven and earth and everything that he created in six days. And God made the seventh day holy for all his works. Therefore he commanded on its behalf that whoever doth any work thereon shall die, and that he who defileth it shall surely die. Wherefore do thou command the children of Israel to observe this day, that they may keep it holy, and not do thereon any work, and not to defile it, as it is holier than all other days. And whoever profaneth it shall surely die. And whoever doeth thereon any work shall surely die eternally, that the children of Israel may observe this day throughout their generations and not be rooted out of the land. For it is a holy day and a blessed day. And every one who observeth it and keepeth Sabbath thereon from all his work will be holy and blessed throughout all days like unto us. Declare and say to the children of Israel the law of this day, both that they should keep Sabbath thereon, and that they should not forsake it in the error of their hearts, and that it is not lawful to do any work thereon which is unseemly, to do thereon their own pleasure, and that they should not prepare thereon anything to be eaten or drunk which they had not prepared for themselves on the sixth day in their dwellings, and that it is not lawful to draw water or bring in or take out thereon through their gates any burden. And they shall not bring in nor take out from house to house on that day. For that day is more holy and blessed than any jubilee day of the jubilees. On this we kept Sabbath in the heavens before it was made known to any flesh to keep Sabbath thereon on the earth. And the Creator of all things blessed it. But he did not sanctify all peoples and nations to keep Sabbath thereon, but Israel alone. 
Them alone he permitted to eat and drink and to keep Sabbath thereon on the earth. And the Creator of all things blessed this day which he had created for a blessing and a sanctification and a glory above all days. This law and testimony was given to the children of Israel as a law forever unto their generations. Paradise and the Fall And on the six days of the second week we brought, according to the word of God, unto Adam all the beasts and all the cattle and all the birds and everything that moveth on the earth and everything that moveth in the water according to their kinds and according to their types. The beasts on the first day, the cattle on the second day, the birds on the third day, and all which moveth on the earth on the fourth day, and that which moveth in the water on the fifth day. And Adam named them all by their respective names, and as he called them, so was their name. And on these five days Adam saw all these, male and female, according to every kind that was on the earth, but he was alone and found no help meet for him. And the Lord said unto us, It is not good that man should be alone. Let us make a helpmeet for him. And the Lord our God caused a deep sleep to fall upon him, and he slept. And he took for the woman one rib from amongst his ribs, and this rib was the origin of the woman from amongst his ribs. And he built up the flesh in its stead, and he built the woman. And he awaked Adam out of his sleep, and on awaking he rose on the sixth day, and he brought her to him, and he knew her, and said unto her, This is now bone of my bones, and flesh of my flesh. She will be called my wife, because she was taken from her husband. Therefore shall man and wife be one. And therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh. In the first week Adam was created, and the rib his wife. In the second week he showed her unto him. And for this reason the commandment was given to keep in their defilement for a male seven days, and for a female twice seven days. And after Adam had completed forty days in the land where he had been created, we brought him into the garden of Eden to till and keep it. But his wife they brought in on the eightieth day, and after this she entered into the garden of Eden. And for this reason the commandment is written on the heavenly tables in regard to her that giveth birth. If she beareth a male, she shall remain in her uncleanness seven days according to the first week of days, and thirty and three days shall she remain in the blood of her purifying. And she shall not touch any hallowed thing, nor enter into the sanctuary, until she accomplished these days which are enjoined in the case of a male child. But in the case of a female child, she shall remain in her uncleanness two weeks of days, according to the first two weeks, and sixty-six days in the blood of her purification, and they will be in all eighty days. And when she had completed these eighty days, we brought her into the garden of Eden, for it is holier than all the earth besides, and every tree that is planted in it is holy. Therefore there was ordained regarding her who beareth a male or a female child the statute of those days, that she should touch no hallowed thing nor enter into the sanctuary until these days for the male or female child are accomplished. This is the law and testimony which was written down for Israel, in order that they should observe it all the days. And in the first week of the first jubilee, Adam and his wife were in the garden for seven years, tilling and keeping it. And we gave him work, and we instructed him to do everything that is suitable for tillage. And he tilled the garden, and was naked, and knew it not, and was not ashamed. And he protected the garden from the birds and beasts and cattle, and gathered its fruit and ate, and put aside the residue for himself and for his wife, and put aside that which was being kept. And after the completion of the seven years which he had completed there, seven years exactly, 
And in the second month, on the seventeenth day of the month, the serpent came and approached the woman. And the serpent said to the woman, Hath God commanded you, saying, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And she said to it, Of all the fruit of the trees of the garden, God hath said unto us, Eat. But of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said unto us, Ye shall not eat thereof, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. For God doth know that on the day ye shall eat thereof, your eyes will be opened, and ye will be as gods, and ye will know good and evil. And the woman saw the tree, that it was agreeable and pleasant to the eye, and that its fruit was good for food. And she took thereof and ate. And when she had first covered her shame with fig leaves, she gave thereof to Adam, and he ate. And his eyes were opened, and he saw that he was naked. And he took fig leaves and sewed them together, and made an apron for himself, and covered his shame. And God cursed the serpent, and was wroth with it for ever. And he was wroth with the woman, because she hearkened to the voice of the serpent, and did eat. And he said unto her, I shall greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy pains. In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children, and thy return shall be unto thy husband, and he will rule over thee. And to Adam also he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and hast eaten of the tree of which I commanded thee thou shouldst not eat thereof, cursed be the ground for thy sake. Thorns and thistles shall it bring forth to thee, and thou shalt eat thy bread in the sweat of thy face, till thou returnest to the earth from whence thou wast taken. For earth thou art, and unto earth shalt thou return. And he made for them coats of skin, and clothed them, and sent them forth from the garden of Eden. And on that day which Adam went forth from the garden, he offered as a sweet savour an offering, frankincense, galbanum, and stacked, and spices, in the morning, with the rising of the sun from the day when he covered his shame. And on that day was closed the mouth of all beasts, and of cattle, and of birds, and of whatever walketh, or of whatever moveth, so that they could no longer speak. For they had all spoken one with another with one lip and with one tongue. And he sent out of the garden of Eden all flesh that was in the garden of Eden, And all flesh was scattered according to its kinds, and according to its types, unto the places which had been created for them. And to Adam alone did he give the wherewithal to cover his shame of all the beasts and cattle. On this account it is prescribed on the heavenly tables, as touching all those who know the judgment of the law, that they should cover their shame, and should not uncover themselves as the Gentiles uncover themselves. And on the new moon of the fourth month, Adam and his wife went forth from the garden of Eden, and they dwelt in the land of Elder, in the land of their creation. And Adam called the name of his wife Eve. And they had no son till the first jubilee, and after this he knew her. Now he tilled the land as he had been instructed in the garden of Eden. Cain and Abel. And in the third week, in the second jubilee, she gave birth to Cain. And in the fourth, she gave birth to Abel. And in the fifth, she gave birth to her daughter, Awan. And in the first year of the third jubilee, Cain slew Abel, because God accepted the sacrifice of Abel and did not accept the offering of Cain. And he slew him in the field. And his blood cried from the ground to heaven, complaining because he had slain him. And the Lord reproved Cain because of Abel, because he had slain him, and he made him a fugitive on the earth because of the blood of his brother. And he cursed him upon the earth. And on this account it is written on the heavenly tables, Cursed is he who smiteth his neighbor treacherously, and that all who have seen and heard it say, 
so be it. And the man who hath seen and not declared it, let him be accursed as the other. And for this reason we announce when we come before the Lord our God all the sin which is committed in heaven and on earth and in light and in darkness and everywhere. And Adam and his wife mourned for Abel four weeks of years. And in the fourth year of the fifth week they became joyful. And Adam knew his wife again, and she bare him a son, and he called his name Seth. For he said, God hath raised up a second seed unto us on the earth instead of Abel, for Cain slew him. And in the sixth week he begat his daughter Azura. And Cain took Awan, his sister, to be his wife, and she bare him Enoch at the close of the fourth jubilee. And in the first year of the first week of the fifth jubilee, houses were built on the earth. And Cain built a city and called its name after the name of his son, Enoch. And Adam knew Eve his wife, and she bare yet nine sons. And in the fifth week of the fifth jubilee, Seth took Azra his sister to be his wife, and in the fourth year of the sixth week she bare him Enos. He began to call on the name of the Lord on the earth. The Patriarchs from Adam to Noah, Life of Enoch, Death of Adam and Cain. And in the seventh jubilee, in the third week, Enos took Noam his sister to be his wife, and she bare him a son in the third year of the fifth week, and he called his name Kenan. And at the close of the eighth jubilee, Kenan took Mualeleth his sister to be his wife, and she bare him a son in the ninth jubilee, in the first week, in the third year of this week, and he called his name Mahalalel. And in the second week of the tenth jubilee, Mahalalel took unto him his wife Dinah, the daughter of Barachiel, the daughter of his father's brother. And she bare him a son in the third week in the sixth year, and he called his name Jared. For in his days the angels of the Lord descended on the earth, those who are named the watchers, that they should instruct the children of men, and that they should do judgment and uprightness on the earth. And in the eleventh jubilee, Jared took to himself a wife, and her name was Baraka, the daughter of Rasajal, a daughter of his father's brother, in the fourth week of this jubilee, and she bare him a son in the fifth week, in the fourth year of the jubilee, and he called his name Enoch. And he was the first among men that are born on earth who learnt writing and knowledge and wisdom, and who wrote down the signs of heaven according to the order of their months in a book, that men might know the seasons of the years according to the order of their separate months. And he was the first to write a testimony. And he testified to the sons of men among the generations of the earth, and recounted the weeks of the jubilees, and made known to them the days of the years, and set in order the months, and recounted the sabbaths of the years, as we made them known to him. And what was, and what will be, he saw in a vision of his sleep, as it will happen to the children of men throughout their generations until the day of judgment. He saw and understood everything, and wrote his testimony, and placed the testimony on earth for all the children of men and for their generations. And in the twelfth jubilee, in the seventh week thereof, he took to himself a wife, and her name was Edni, the daughter of Daniel, the daughter of his father's brother. And in the sixth year in this week she bare him a son, and he called his name Methuselah. And he was moreover with the angels of God these six jubilees of years, and they showed him everything which is on earth and in heavens, the rule of the sun, and he wrote down everything. And he testified to the watchers who had sinned with the daughters of men. For these had begun to unite themselves so as to be defiled with the daughters of men. And Enoch testified against them all. And he was taken from amongst the children of men, and we conducted him into the garden of Eden in majesty and honor. 
and behold, there he writeth down the condemnation and judgment of the world, and all the wickedness of the children of men. And on account of it, God brought the waters of the flood upon all the land of Eden. For there he was set as a sign, and that he should testify against all the children of men, that he should recount all the deeds of the generations until the day of condemnation. And he burnt the incense of the sanctuary, even sweet spices, acceptable before the Lord on the mount. For the Lord hath four places on the earth, the garden of Eden, and the mount of the east, and this mountain on which thou art this day, Mount Sinai, and Mount Zion, which will be sanctified in the new creation for a sanctification of the earth. Through it will the earth be sanctified from all its guilt and its uncleanness throughout the generations of the world. And in the fourteenth jubilee, Methuselah took unto himself a wife, Edna, the daughter of Azrael, the daughter of his father's brother, in the third week, in the first year of this week. And he begat a son and called his name Lamech. And in the fifteenth jubilee, in the third week, Lamech took to himself a wife, and her name was Betanos, the daughter of Barachiel, the daughter of his father's brother. And in this week she bare him a son, and he called his name Noah, saying, This one will comfort me for my trouble and all my work, and for the ground which the Lord hath cursed. And at the close of the nineteenth jubilee, in the seventh week, in the sixth year thereof, Adam died, and all his sons buried him in the land of his creation, and he was the first to be buried in the earth. And he lacked seventy years of one thousand years, for one thousand years are as one day in the testimony of the heavens, and therefore was it written concerning the tree of knowledge, On the day that ye eat thereof ye will die. For this reason he did not complete the years of this day, for he died during it. At the close of this jubilee, Cain was killed after him in the same year. For his house fell upon him, and he died in the midst of his house, and he was killed by its stones, for with a stone he had killed Abel. And by a stone was he killed in righteous judgment. For this reason it was ordained on the heavenly tables, with the instrument with which a man killeth his neighbor, with the same shall he be killed. After the manner that he wounded him, in like manner shall they deal with him. And in the twenty-fifth jubilee, Noah took to himself a wife, and her name was Emzera, the daughter of Rachel, the daughter of his father's brother, in the first year, in the fifth week. And in the third year thereof she bare him Shem, in the fifth year thereof she bare him Ham, and in the first year, in the sixth week, she bare him Japheth. The Fall of the Angels and Their Punishment The Deluge Foretold And it came to pass, when the children of men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born unto them, that the angels of God saw them on a certain year of this jubilee, that they were beautiful to look upon. And they took themselves wives of all whom they chose, and they bare unto them sons, and they were giants. And lawlessness increased on the earth, and all flesh corrupted its way, alike men and cattle and beasts and birds and everything that walketh on the earth. All of them corrupted their ways and their orders, and they began to devour each other and lawlessness increased on the earth, and every imagination of the thoughts of all men was thus evil continually. And God looked upon the earth, and behold, it was corrupt, and all flesh had corrupted its orders, and all that were upon the earth had wrought all manner of evil before his eyes. And he said, I shall destroy man and all flesh upon the face of the earth which I have created. 
But Noah found grace before the eyes of the Lord, and against the angels whom he had sent upon the earth he was exceedingly wroth, and he gave commandment to root them out of all their dominion, and he bade us to bind them in the depths of the earth, and behold, they are bound in the midst of them, and are kept separate. And against their sons went forth a command from before his face that they should be smitten with the sword, and be removed from under heaven. And he said, Thy spirit will not always abide on man, for they also are flesh, and their days shall be one hundred and twenty years. And he sent his sword into their midst, that each should slay his neighbor. And they began to slay each other, till they all fell by the sword and were destroyed from the earth. And their fathers were witnesses of their destruction. And after this they were bound in the depths of the earth for ever, until the day of the great condemnation, when judgment is executed on all those who have corrupted their ways and their works before the Lord. And he destroyed all from their places, and there was not left one of them whom he judged not according to all their wickedness. And he made for all his works a new and righteous nature, so that they should not sin in their whole nature for ever, but should be all righteous, each in his kind, always. And the judgment of all is ordained and written on the heavenly tables in righteousness, even the judgment of all who depart from the path which was ordained for them to walk in. And if they walk not therein, judgment is written down for every creature and for every kind. And there is nothing in heaven or on earth or in light, or in darkness, or in sheol, or in the depth, or in the places of darkness which is not judged. And all their judgments are ordained, and written, and engraved. In regard to all he will judge, the great according to his greatness, and the small according to his smallness, and each according to his way. And he is not one who will regard the person of any, nor is he one who will receive gifts if he saith that he will execute judgment on each. If one gave everything that is on the earth, he will not regard the gifts or the person of any, nor accept anything at his hands, for he is a righteous judge. And of the children of Israel it hath been written and ordained, If they turn to him in righteousness, he will forgive all their transgressions and pardon all all their sins. It is written and ordained that he will show mercy to all who turn from all their guilt once each year. And as for all those who corrupted their ways and their thoughts before the flood, no man's person was accepted save that of Noah alone. For his person was accepted in behalf of his sons, whom God saved from the waters of the flood on his account. For his heart was righteous in all his ways, according as it was commanded regarding him. And he had not departed from aught that was ordained for him. And the Lord said that he would destroy everything which was upon the earth, both men and cattle and beasts and fowls of the air, and that which moveth on the earth. The Building of the Ark The Flood and he commanded Noah to make him an ark, that he might save himself from the waters of the flood. And Noah made the ark in all respects as he commanded him, in the twenty-seventh jubilee of years, in the fifth week, in the fifth year, on the new moon of the first month. And he entered in the sixth year thereof, in the second month, on the new moon of the second month, till the sixteenth. And he entered and all that we brought to him into the ark. And the Lord closed it from without on the seventeenth evening. And the Lord opened seven floodgates of heaven, and the mouths of the fountains of the great deep, seven mouths in number. And the floodgates began to pour down water from heaven forty days and forty nights, and the fountains of the deep also sent up waters until the whole world was full of water. And the waters increased upon the earth, 
Fifteen cubits did the waters rise above all the high mountains, and the ark was lift up above the earth, and it moved upon the face of the waters. And the water prevailed on the face of the earth five months, one hundred and fifty days. And the ark went and rested on the top of Luba, one of the mountains of Ararat. And on the new moon in the fourth month, the fountains of the great deep were closed, and the floodgates of heaven were restrained. And on the new moon of the seventh month, all the mouths of the abysses of the earth were opened, and the water began to descend into the deep below. And on the new moon of the tenth month, the tops of the mountains were seen. And on the new moon of the first month, earth became visible. And the waters disappeared from above the earth in the fifth week, in the seventh year thereof. And on the seventeenth day, in the second month, the earth was dry. And on the twenty-seventh thereof, he opened the ark, and sent forth from it beasts and cattle and birds and every moving thing. Noah's Sacrifice God's Covenant with Him Instructions to Moses about eating of blood The Feast of Weeks, etc. And Division of the Year And on the new moon of the third month he went forth from the ark and built an altar on that mountain. And he made atonement for the earth and took a kid and made atonement by its blood for all the guilt of the earth for everything that had been on it had been destroyed, save those that were in the ark with Noah. And he placed the fat thereof on the altar, and he took an ox and a goat and a sheep and kids and salt and a turtle dove and the young of a dove, and placed a burnt sacrifice on the altar, and poured thereon an offering mingled with oil and sprinkled with wine and strewed frankincense over everything and caused a goodly savour to arise, acceptable before the Lord. And the Lord smelt the goodly savour, and he made a covenant with him that there should not be any more a flood to destroy the earth, that all the days of the earth, sea time and harvest, should never cease, cold and heat and summer and winter and day and night should not change their order, nor cease for ever. And you, Increase ye, and multiply upon the earth, and become many upon it, and be a blessing upon it. The fear of you and the dread of you I shall inspire in everything that is on earth and in the sea. And behold, I have given unto you all beasts, and all winged things, and everything that moveth on the earth, and the fish in the waters, and all things for food as the green herbs. I have given you all things to eat but flesh with the life thereof with the blood ye shall not eat. For the life of all flesh is in the blood, lest your blood of your lives be required. At the hand of every man, at the hand of every beast, shall I require the blood of man. Whoso sheddeth man's blood by man, shall his blood be shed. For in the image of God made he man. And you increase ye, and multiply on the earth. And Noah and his sons swore that they would not eat any blood that was in any flesh. And he made a covenant before the Lord God for ever throughout all the generations of the earth in this month. On this account he spake to thee that thou shouldst make a covenant with the children of Israel in this month upon the mountain with an oath, and that thou shouldst sprinkle blood upon them because of all the words of the covenant which the Lord made with them for ever. And this testimony is written concerning you, that you should observe it continually, so that you should not eat on any day any blood of beasts or birds or cattle during all the days of the earth. And the man who eateth the blood of beast or of cattle or of birds during all the days of the earth, he and his seed shall be rooted out of the land. And do thou command the children of Israel to eat no blood, so that their names and their seed may be before the Lord our God continually. And for this law there is no limit of days, for it is for ever. 
they shall observe it throughout their generations, so that they may continue supplicating on your behalf with blood before the altar. Every day and at the time of morning and evening, they shall seek forgiveness on your behalf perpetually before the Lord, that they may keep it and not be rooted out. And he gave to Noah and his sons a sign that there should not again be a flood on the earth. He set his bow in the cloud for a sign of the eternal covenant that there should not again be a flood on the earth to destroy it all the days of the earth. For this reason it is ordained and written on the heavenly tables that they should celebrate the Feast of Weeks in this month once a year to renew the covenant every year. And this whole festival was celebrated in heaven from the day of creation till the days of Noah. Twenty-six jubilees and five weeks of years. And Noah and his sons observed it for seven jubilees and one week of years, till the day of Noah's death. And from the day of Noah's death his sons did away with it, until the days of Abraham, and they ate blood. But Abraham observed it, and Isaac and Jacob and his children observed it up to thy days. And in thy days the children of Israel forgot it, until he celebrated it anew on this mountain. And do thou command the children of Israel to observe this festival in all their generations for a commandment unto them. One day in the year, in this month, they shall celebrate the festival. For it is the feast of weeks and the feast of first fruits. This feast is twofold and of a double nature, according to what is written and engraven concerning it, Celebrate it. For I have written in the book of the first law, in that which I have written for thee, that thou should celebrate it in its season, one day in the year. And I explained it to thee, its sacrifices, that the children of Israel should remember, and should celebrate it throughout their generations in this month, one day in every year. And on the new moon of the first month, and on the new moon of the fourth month, and on the new moon of the seventh month, and on the new moon of the tenth month, are the days of remembrance, and the days of the seasons in the four divisions of the year. These are written and ordained as a testimony for ever. And Noah ordained them for himself as feasts for the generations for ever, so that they have become thereby a memorial unto him. And on the new moon of the first month, he was bidden to make for himself an ark, and on that day the earth became dry, and he opened the ark and saw the earth. And on the new moon of the fourth month, the mouths of the depths of the abysses beneath were closed. And on the new moon of the seventh month, all the mouths of the abysses of the earth were opened, and the waters began to descend into them. And on the new moon of the tenth month, the tops of the mountains were seen, and Noah was glad. And on this account he ordained them for himself as feasts for a memorial for ever, and thus are they ordained. And they placed them on the heavenly tables. Each had thirteen weeks, from one to another past their memorial, from the first to the second, and from the second to the third, and from the third to the fourth. And all the days of the commandment will be two and fifty weeks of days, and these will make the entire year complete. Thus it is engraven and ordained on the heavenly tables, and there is no neglecting this commandment for a single year or from year to year. And command thou the children of Israel that they observe the years according to this reckoning three hundred and sixty-four days, and these will constitute a complete year and they will not disturb its time from its days and from its feasts, for everything will fall out in them according to their testimony, and they will not leave out any day nor disturb any feasts. But if they do neglect and do not observe them according to his commandment, then they will disturb all their seasons, and the years will be dislodged from this order, and they will disturb the seasons, and the years will be dislodged and they will neglect their ordinances. And all the children of Israel will forget, and will not find the path of the years, and will forget the new moons, the seasons, and sabbaths, 
and they will go wrong as to all the order of the years. For I know, and from henceforth shall I declare it unto thee, and it is not of my own devising, for the book lieth written before me, and on the heavenly tables the division of days is ordained, lest they forget the feasts of the covenant and walk according to the feasts of the Gentiles after their error and after their ignorance. For there will be those who will assuredly make observations of the moon, how it disturbeth the seasons and cometh in from year to year ten days too soon. For this reason the years will come upon them when they will disturb the order and make an abominable day the day of testimony and an unclean day a feast day. And they will confound all the days, the holy with the unclean and the unclean day with the holy. For they will go wrong as to the months and Sabbaths and feasts and jubilees. For this reason I command and testify to thee that thou mayest testify to them. For after thy death, thy children will disturb them, so that it will not make the year 364 days only. And for this reason they will go wrong as to the new moons and seasons and Sabbaths and festivals, and they will eat all kinds of blood with all kinds of flesh. Noah offers sacrifice. The cursing of Canaan. Noah's sons and grandsons and their cities. Noah's admonitions. And in the seventh week, in the first year thereof, in this jubilee, Noah planted vines on the mountain on which the ark had rested, named Luba, one of the Ararat mountains. And they produced fruit in the fourth year, and he guarded their fruit and gathered it in this year, in the seventh month. And he made wine therefrom and put it into a vessel and kept it until the fifth year, until the first day on the new moon of the first month. And he celebrated with joy the day of this feast. And he made a burnt sacrifice unto the Lord, one young ox and one ram and seven sheep, each a year old, and a kid of the goats, that he might make atonement thereby for himself and his sons. And he prepared the kid first and placed some of its blood on the flesh that was on the altar which he had made. And all the fat he laid on the altar where he made the burnt sacrifice, and the ox and the ram and the sheep, and he laid all their flesh upon the altar. And he placed all their offerings mingled with oil upon it. And afterwards he sprinkled wine on the fire, which he had previously made on the altar. And he placed incense on the altar, and caused a sweet savour to ascend, acceptable before the Lord his God. And he rejoiced and drank of this wine, he and his children with joy. And it was evening, and he went into his tent, and being drunken he lay down and slept, and was uncovered in his tent as he slept. And Ham saw Noah his father naked, and went forth and told his two brethren without. And Shem took his garment and arose, he and Japheth, and they placed the garment on their shoulders and went backward and covered the shame of their father, and their faces were backward. And Noah awoke from his sleep and knew all that his youngest son had done unto him. And he cursed his son and said, Cursed be Canaan, an enslaved servant shall he be unto his brethren. And he blessed Shem and said, Blessed be the Lord God of Shem, and Canaan shall be his servant. God shall enlarge Japheth, and God shall dwell in the dwelling of Shem, and Canaan shall be his servant. And Ham knew that his father had cursed his younger son, and he was displeased that he had cursed his son, and he parted from his father, he and his sons with him, Cush and Miseriam and Put and Canaan. And he built for himself a city, and called its name after the name of his wife, Naolatamauk. And Japheth saw it, and became envious of his brother. And he too built for himself a city, and he called its name after the name of his wife, Adatanases. And Shem dwelt with his father Noah, and he built a city close to his father on the mountain, and he too called its name after the name of his wife, Zedekatelabab. And behold, these three cities are near Mount Luba, Sedekatelebab fronting the mountain on its east, and Nealatamaok on the south, 
Adartanatanes towards the west. And these are the sons of Shem, Elam and Asher and Apaxad. This son was born two years after the flood, and Lud and Aram. The sons of Japheth, Goma and Magog and Madai and Javan, Tubal and Meshech and Tyrus. These are the sons of Noah. And in the twenty-eighth jubilee, Noah began to adjoin upon his son's sons the ordinances and commandments and all the judgments that he knew. And he exhorted his sons to observe righteousness and to cover the shame of their flesh and to bless their Creator, and honor father and mother, and love their neighbor, and guard their souls from fornication and uncleanness and all iniquity. For owing to these three things came the flood upon the earth, namely, owing to the fornication wherein the watchers, against the law of their ordinances, went a-whoring after the daughters of men, and took themselves wives of all which they chose, and they made the beginning of uncleanness. And they begat sons, the Naphidim, and they were all unlike, and they devoured one another. And the giants slew the Naphil, and the Naphil slew the Eljo, and the Eljo mankind, and one man another. And every one sold himself to work iniquity, and to shed much blood, and the earth was filled with iniquity. And after this they sinned against the beasts and birds, and all that moveth and walketh on the earth and much blood was shed on the earth, and every imagination and desire of men imagined vanity and evil continually. And the Lord destroyed everything from off the face of the earth because of the wickedness of their deeds and because of the blood which they had shed in the midst of the earth. He destroyed everything. And we were left, I and you, my sons, and everything that entered with us into the ark. And behold, I see your works before me, that ye do not walk in righteousness. For in the path of destruction ye have begun to walk, and ye are parting one from another, and are envious one of another. And so it cometh that ye are not in harmony, my sons, each with his brother. For I see, and behold, the demons have begun their seductions against you and against your children. And now I fear on your behalf that after my death, ye will shed the blood of men upon the earth, and that ye too will be destroyed from the face of the earth. For whoso sheddeth man's blood, and whoso eateth the blood of any flesh, will all be destroyed from the earth. And there will not be left any man that eateth blood, or that sheddeth the blood of man on the earth, nor will there be left to him any seed or descendants living under heaven. For into Sheol will they go, and into the place of condemnation will they descend, and into the darkness of the deep will they all be removed by a violent death. There shall no blood be seen upon you of all the blood there shall be all the days in which ye have killed any beasts or cattle or whatever flieth upon the earth. And work ye a good work to your souls by covering that which hath been shed on the face of the earth. And ye shall not be like him who eateth with blood, But guard yourselves that none may eat blood before you. Cover the blood, for thus have I been commanded to testify to you and your children together with all flesh. And suffer not the soul to be eaten with the flesh, that your blood, which is your life, may not be required at the hand of any flesh that sheddeth it on the earth. For the earth will not be clean from the blood which hath been shed upon it. For only through the blood of him that shed it will the earth be purified throughout all its generations. And now, my children, hearken. Work judgment and righteousness, that ye may be planted in righteousness over the face of the whole earth, and your glory lifted up before my God, who saved me from the waters of the flood. And behold, ye will go and build for yourselves cities, and plant in them all the plants that are upon the earth, and moreover all fruit-bearing trees. For three years the fruit of everything that is eaten will not be gathered, and in the fourth year its fruit will be accounted holy, and they will offer the first fruits acceptable before the Most High God, who created heaven and earth and all things. Let them offer in abundance the first of the wine and oil as first fruits on the altar of the Lord, who receiveth it. And what is left, 
that the servants of the house of the Lord eat before the altar which receiveth it. And in the fifth year make ye the release, so that ye release it in righteousness and uprightness, and ye shall be righteous, and all that ye plant will prosper. For thus did Enoch, the father of your father, command Methuselah his son, and Methuselah his son Lamech, and Lamech commanded me all the things which his father commanded him. And I also will give you commandment, my sons, as Enoch commanded his son in the first jubilees, whilst still living, the seventh in his generation, he commanded and testified to his son and to his son's sons until the day of his death. Genealogy of the Descendants of Shem Noah and his sons divide the earth. In the twenty-ninth jubilee, in the first week, in the beginning thereof, Arpachshad took to himself a wife, and her name was Razuaja, the daughter of Susan, the daughter of Elam. And she bare him a son in the third year in this week, and he called his name Canaan. And the son grew, and his father taught him writing, and he went to seek for himself a place where he might seize for himself a city. And he found a writing which former generations had carved on the rock, and he read what was thereon, and he transcribed it and sinned owing to it. For it contained the teaching of the watchers, in accordance with which they used to observe the omens of the sun and moon and stars in all the signs of heaven. And he wrote it down and said nothing regarding it, for he was afraid to speak to Noah about it, lest he should be angry with him on account of it. And in the thirtieth jubilee, in the second week, in the first year thereof, he took to himself a wife, and her name was Melchah, the daughter of Madai, the son of Japheth. And in the fourth year he begat a son, and called his name Shelah, for he said, Truly I have been sent. And in the fourth year he was born. And Shelah grew up and took to himself a wife, and her name was Muak, the daughter of Kesel his father's brother, in the one and thirtieth jubilee, in the fifth week, in the first year thereof. And she bare him a son in the fifth year thereof, and he called his name Eber. And he took unto himself a wife, and her name was Azura, the daughter of Nebrod, in the thirty-second jubilee, in the seventh week, in the third year thereof. And in the sixth year thereof she bare him a son, and he called his name Peleg, for in the days when he was born, the children of Noah began to divide the earth amongst themselves. For this reason he called his name Peleg. And they divided it secretly amongst themselves, and told it to Noah. And it came to pass, in the beginning of the thirty-third jubilee, that they divided the earth into three parts, for Shem, and Ham, and Japheth, according to the inheritance of each, in the first year, in the first week when one of us who had been sent was with them. And he called his sons, and they drew nigh to him, they and their children, and he divided the earth into lots, which his three sons were to take in possession. And they reached forth their hands, and took the writing out of the bosom of Noah their father. And there came forth on the writing as Shem's lot, the middle of the earth, which he should take as an inheritance for himself and for his sons for the generations of eternity. From the middle of the mountain range of Rapha, from the mouth of the water, from the river Tinna. And his portion goeth towards the west through the midst of this river, and it extendeth till it reacheth the water of the abysses, out of which this river goeth forth and poureth its waters into the sea Miat. And this river floweth into the great sea, and all that is towards the north is Japheth's, and all that is towards the south belongeth to Shem. And it extendeth till it reacheth Caraso. This is in the bosom of the tongue which looketh towards the south. And his portion extendeth along the great sea, and it extendeth in a straight line till it reacheth the west of the tongue which looketh towards the south. For this sea is named the tongue of the Egyptian sea. And it turneth from here towards the south, towards the mouth of the great sea on the shore of its waters. 
and it extended to the west to Afra, and it extended till it reacheth the waters of the river Gihon, and to the south of the waters of Gihon, to the banks of this river. And it extended towards the east, till it reacheth the garden of Eden, to the south thereof, to the south, and from the east of the whole land of Eden, and of the whole east, it turneth to the east, and proceedeth till it reacheth the east of the mountain named Rapha, and it descended to the bank of the mouth of the river Tinna. This portion came forth by lot for Shem and his sons, that they should possess it for ever unto his generations for evermore. And Noah rejoiced that this portion came forth for Shem and for his sons. And he remembered all that he had spoken with his mouth in prophecy, for he had said, Blessed be the Lord God of Shem, and may the Lord dwell in the dwelling of Shem. And he knew that the Garden of Eden is the Holy of Holies and the dwelling of the Lord, and Mount Sinai the center of the desert, and Mount Zion the center of the navel of the earth. These three were created as holy places facing each other. And he blessed the God of gods who had put the word of the Lord into his mouth and the Lord for evermore. And he knew that a blessed portion and a blessing had come to Shem and his sons unto the generations for ever. The whole land of Eden and the whole land of the Red Sea and the whole land of the East and India and on the Red Sea and the mountains thereof and all the land of Bashan and all the land of Lebanon and the islands of Kaphtur and all the mountains of Sania and Amana, and the mountains of Ashur in the north, and all the land of Elam, Ashur, and Babel, and Susan, and Maedai, and all the mountains of Ararat, and all the region beyond the sea, which is beyond the mountains of Ashur, towards the north, a blessed and spacious land, and all that is in it is very good. And for Ham came forth the second portion, beyond the Gihon, towards the south, to the right of the garden. And it extended towards the south, and it extended to all the mountains of fire. And it extended towards the west, to the sea of Atel. And it extended toward the west, till it reaches the sea of Mark, that sea which, if anything descends into it, it perishes. And it goeth forth towards the north, to the limits of Gadir. And it goeth forth to the coast of the waters of the sea, to the waters of the great sea, till it draweth near to the river Gihon, and goeth along the river Gihon, till it reacheth the right of the garden of Eden. And this is the land which came forth for Ham, as the portion which he was to occupy for ever, for himself and his sons, unto their generations for ever. And for Japheth came forth the third portion, beyond the river Tinna, to the north of the overflow of its waters. And it extendeth northeasterly to the whole region of Gog, and to all the country east thereof. And it extendeth northerly to the north, and it extendeth to the mountains of Celt towards the north, and towards the sea of Mark. And it goeth forth to the east of Gadia, as far as the region of the waters of the sea. And it extendeth until it approacheth the west of Pharah, and it returneth towards Aphrodite, and it extendeth easterly to the waters of the sea of Meat, And it extendeth to the region of the river Tinna in a north-easterly direction until it approacheth the boundary of its waters towards the mountain Rapha, and it turneth round towards the north. This is the land which came forth for Japheth and his sons as the portion of his inheritance which he should possess for himself and his sons for their generations for ever. Five great islands and a great land in the north. But it is cold, and the land of Ham is hot, and the land of Shem is neither hot nor cold, but it is a blended cold and heat. Subdivision of the Three Portions Amongst the Grandchildren Oath Taken by Noah's Sons And Ham divided amongst his sons, and the first portion came forth for Cush towards the east, and to the west of him for Mitzrayim, and to the west of him for Put, and to the west of him, and to the west thereof on the sea for Canaan. 
And Shem also divided amongst his sons. And the first portion came forth for Elam and his sons, to the east of the river Tigris, till it approacheth the east. The whole land of India, and on the Red Sea, on its coast, and the waters of Dedan, and all the mountains of Mibri and Elah, and all the land of Susan, and all that is on the side of Farnak, to the Red Sea, and the river Tenna. And for Asher came forth the second portion, all the land of Asher, and Nineveh, and Shina, and to the border of India, and it ascendeth and skirteth the river. And for Apakshad came forth the third portion, all the land of the region of the Chaldees, to the east of the Euphrates, bordering on the Red Sea, and all the waters of the desert, close to the tongue of the sea, which looketh towards Egypt, all the land of Lebanon, and Sania, and Amana, to the border of the Euphrates. And for Aram, there came forth the fourth portion, all the land of Mesopotamia, between the Tigris and the Euphrates, to the north of the Chaldees, to the border of the mountains of Asher, and the land of Arara. And there came forth for Lud the fifth portion, the mountains of Asher, and all appertaining to them, till it reacheth the great sea, and till it reacheth the east of Asher his brother. And Japheth also divided the land of his inheritance amongst his sons. And the first portion came forth for Gomer, to the east from the north side to the river Tinna. And in the north there came forth for Magog all the inner portions of the north, until it reacheth to the sea of Meat. And for Madai came forth as his portion, that he should possess from the west of his two brothers to the islands, and to the coasts of the islands. And for Javan came forth the fourth portion, every island and the islands which are towards the border of Lad. And for Tubal there came forth the fifth portion in the midst of the tongue, which approacheth towards the border of the portion of Lud, to the second tongue, to the region beyond the second tongue, unto the third tongue. And for Meshech came forth the sixth portion, all the region beyond the third tongue, till it approacheth the east of Gadia. And thus the sons of Noah divided unto their sons in the presence of Noah their father, and he bound them all by an oath, imprecating a curse on every one that sought to seize the portion which had not fallen to him by his lot. And they all said, So be it, so be it, for themselves and their sons for ever throughout their generations till the day of judgment, on which the Lord God shall judge them with a sword and with fire for all the unclean wickedness of their errors, wherewith they have filled the earth with transgression and uncleanness and fornication and sin. Noah's sons led astray by evil spirits. Noah's prayer, Mastema, death of Noah. And in the third week of this jubilee, the unclean demons began to lead astray the children of the sons of Noah, and to make to err and destroy them. And the sons of Noah came to Noah their father, and they told him concerning the demons which were leading astray and binding and slaying his sons' sons. And he prayed before the Lord his God and said, God of the spirits of all flesh, who has shown mercy unto me, and has saved me and my sons from the waters of the flood, and has not caused me to perish as thou didst the sons of perdition. For thy grace hath been great towards me, and great hath been thy mercy to my soul. Let thy grace be lift up upon my sons, and let not wicked spirits rule over them, lest they should destroy them from the earth. But do thou bless me and my sons, that we may increase and multiply and replenish the earth. And thou knowest how thy watchers, the fathers of these spirits, acted in my day. And as for these spirits which are living, imprison them and hold them fast in the place of condemnation. And let them not bring destruction on the sons of thy servant, my God. For these are malignant and created in order to destroy. And let them not rule over the spirits of the living. For thou alone can exercise dominion over them. And let them not have power over the sons of the righteous from henceforth and for evermore. And the Lord our God bade us to bind all. 
And the chief of the spirits, Mastema, came and said, Lord Creator, let some of them remain before me, and let them hearken to my voice and do all that I shall say unto them. For if some of them are not left to me, I shall not be able to execute the power of my will on the sons of men. For these are for corruption and leading astray before my judgment. For great is the wickedness of the sons of men. And he said, Let the tenth part of them remain before him, and let nine parts descend into the place of condemnation. And one of us he commanded that we should teach Noah all their medicines, for he knew that they would not walk in uprightness nor strive in righteousness. And we did according to all his words. All the malignant evil ones we bound in the place of condemnation, and a tenth part of them we left, that they might be subject before Satan on the earth. And we explained to Noah all the medicines of their diseases, together with their seductions, how he might heal them with herbs of the earth. And Noah wrote down all things in a book, as we instructed him, concerning every kind of medicine. Thus the evil spirits were precluded from hurting the sons of Noah. And he gave all that he had written to Shem, his eldest son, for he loved him exceedingly above all his sons. And Noah slept with his fathers and was buried on Mount Luba in the land of Ararat. Nine hundred and fifty years he completed in his life, nineteen jubilees and two weeks and five years. And in his life on earth he excelled the children of men, save Enoch, because of the righteousness wherein he was perfect. For Enoch's office was ordained for a testimony to the generations of the world, so that he should recount all the deeds of generation unto generation till the day of judgment. The Tower of Babel and the Confusion of Tongues and in the three and thirtieth jubilee, in the first year, in the second week, Peleg took to himself a wife, whose name was Lomna, the daughter of Sinia, and she bare him a son in the fourth year of this week, and he called his name Ryu, for he said, Behold, the children of men have become evil through the wicked purpose of building for themselves a city and a tower in the land of Shina. For they departed from the land of Ararat eastward to Shina. For in his days they built the city and the tower, saying, Go to, let us ascend thereby into heaven. And they began to build. And in the fourth week they made brick with fire, and the bricks served them for stone, and the clay with which they cemented them together was asphalt, which cometh out of the sea, and out of the fountains of water in the land of Shina and they built it. Forty and three years were they building it. Its breadth was two hundred and three bricks, and the height of a brick was the third of one, and its height amounted to five thousand four hundred and thirty-three cubits and two palms, and the extent of one wall was thirteen states, and of the other thirty states. And the Lord our God said unto us, Behold, there are one people, and this they begin to do, and now nothing will be withholden from them. Go to, let us go down and confound their language, that they may not understand one another's speech, and that they may be dispersed into cities and nations, and one purpose will no longer abide with them till the day of judgment. And the Lord descended and we descended with him to see the city and the tower which the children of men had built. And he confounded their language, and they no longer understood one another's speech. And they ceased then to build the city and the tower. For this reason the whole land of Shina is called Babel, because the Lord did there confound all the language of the children of men, and from thence they were dispersed into their cities, each according to his language, and his nation. And the Lord sent a mighty wind against the tower, and overthrew it upon the earth. And behold, it was between Asher and Babylon in the land of Shina, and they called its name 
overthrow. In the fourth week, in the first year of the beginning thereof, in the four and thirtieth jubilee, were they dispersed from the land of Shinar. The children of Noah enter their districts. Canaan seizes Palestine wrongfully. Medai receives Media. And Ham and his sons went into the land which he was to occupy, which he acquired as his portion in the land of the north. And Canaan saw the land of Lebanon to the river of Egypt, that it was very good. And he went not into the land of his inheritance to the west, that is to the sea. And he dwelt in the land of Lebanon, eastward and westward from the border of Jordan and from the border of the sea. And Ham his father, and Cush, and Miseriam his brothers said unto him, Thou hast settled in a land which is not thine, and which did not fall to us by lot. Do not do so. For if thou dost do so, thou and thy sons will fall in the land, and be accursed through sedition. For by sedition ye have settled, and by sedition will thy children fall, and thou shalt be rooted out for ever. Dwell not in the dwelling of Shem, for to Shem and to his sons did it come by their lot. Cursed art thou, and cursed shalt thou be beyond all the sons of Noah, by the curse by which we bound ourselves by an oath in the presence of the holy judge, and in the presence of Noah our father. But he did not hearken unto them, and dwelt in the land of Lebanon from Hamath to the entering of Egypt, he and his sons, until this day. And for this reason that land is named Canaan. And Japheth and his sons went towards the sea, and dwelt in the land of their portion. And Madai saw the land of the sea, and it did not please him, and he begged a portion from Elam and Asher and Apaxad, his wife's brother, and he dwelt in the land of Media, near to his wife's brother, until this day. And he called his dwelling place, and the dwelling place of his sons, Media, after the name of their father, Medai. The History of the Patriarchs from Ryu to Abraham, the corruption of the human race. And in the thirty-fifth jubilee, in the third week, in the first year thereof, Ryu took to himself a wife, and her name was Ora, the daughter of Ur, the son of Kesed. And she bare him a son, and he called his name Sero, in the seventh year of this week, in this jubilee. And the sons of Noah began to war on each other to take captive and to slay each other, and to shed the blood of men on the earth, and to eat blood, and to build strong cities, the walls and towers. And individuals began to exalt themselves above the nation, and to found the beginnings of kingdoms, and to go to war, people against people, and nation against nation, and city against city. And all began to do evil and to acquire arms, and to teach their sons war. And they began to capture cities, and to sell male and female slaves. And Ur, the son of Kesed, built the city of Ara of the Chaldees, and called its name after his own name and the name of his father. And they made for themselves molten images, and they worshipped each the idol, the molten image which they had made for themselves. And they began to make graven images and unclean simulacra, and malignant spirits assisted and seduced them into committing transgression and uncleanness. And the prince Mastema exerted himself to do all this, and he sent forth other spirits, those which were put under his hand, to do all manner of wrong and sin and all manner of transgression, to corrupt and destroy, and to shed blood upon the earth. And for this reason he called the name of Sero Serug, for every one turned to do all manner of sin and transgression. And he grew up and dwelt in Ur of the Chaldees, near to the father of his wife's mother, and he worshipped idols. And he took to himself a wife in the thirty-sixth jubilee, in the fifth week, in the first year thereof. And her name was Melka, 
the daughter of Kaba, the daughter of his father's brother. And she bare him Nahor in the first year of this week. And he grew and dwelt in Ur of the Chaldees. And his father taught him the researches of the Chaldees to divine an auger, according to the signs of heaven. And in the thirty-seventh jubilee, in the sixth week, in the first year thereof, he took to himself a wife, and her name was Ejaska, the daughter of Nestag of the Chaldees. And she bare him Tira in the seventh year of this week. And the prince Mastema sent ravens and birds to devour the seed which was sown in the land, in order to destroy the land and rob the children of men of their labors. Before they could plow in the seed, the ravens picked it from the surface of the ground. And for this reason he called his name Tira, because the ravens and the birds reduced them to destitution and devoured their seed. And the years began to be barren, owing to the birds, and they devoured all the fruit of the trees from the trees, It was only with great effort that they could save a little of all the fruit of the earth in their days. And in this thirty-ninth jubilee, in the second week in the first year, Tirah took to himself a wife, and her name was Edna, the daughter of Abram, the daughter of his father's sister. And in the seventh year of this week, she bare him a son, and he called his name Abram, by the name of the father of his mother, for he had died before his daughter had conceived a son. Abram's Knowledge of God and Wonderful Deeds And the child began to understand the errors of the earth, that all went astray after graven images and after uncleanness. And his father taught him writing, and he was two weeks of years old and he separated himself from his father that he might not worship idols with him. And he began to pray to the Creator of all things that he might save him from the errors of the children of men and that his portion should not fall into error after uncleanness and vileness. And the seed time came for the sowing of seed upon the land, and they all went forth together to protect their seed against the ravens. And Abram went forth with those that went, and the child was a lad of fourteen years. And a cloud of ravens came to devour the seed, and Abram ran to meet them before they settled on the ground, and cried to them before they settled on the ground to devour the seed, and said, Descend not, return to the place whence ye came. And they proceeded to turn back. And he caused the clouds of ravens to turn back that day seventy times. And of all the ravens throughout all the land where Abram was, there settled there not so much as one. And all who were with him throughout all the land saw him cry out, and all the ravens turned back. And his name became great in all the land of the Chaldees. And there came to him this year all that wished to sow. And he went with them until the time of sowing ceased, and they sowed their land, and that year they brought enough grain home, and ate, and were satisfied. And in the first year of the fifth week, Abram taught those who made implements for oxen, the artificers in wood, and they made a vessel above the ground, facing the frame of the plough, in order to put the seed thereon. And the seed fell down therefrom upon the share of the plough, and was hidden in the earth, and they no longer feared the ravens. And after this manner they made vessels above the ground on all the frames of the ploughs, and they sowed and tilled all the land according as Abram commanded them, and they no longer feared the birds. Abraham seeks to convert Terah from idolatry. The family of Terah. Abraham burns the idols. Death of Haran. And it came to pass in the sixth week, in the seventh year thereof, that Abraham said to Terah his father, saying, Father, and he said, Behold, here am I, my son. And he said, What help and profit have we from those idols which thou dost worship? 
and before which thou dost bow thyself. For there is no spirit in them, for they are dumb forms and a misleading of the heart. Worship them not. Worship the God of heaven, who causeth the rain and the dew to descend on the earth, and doeth everything upon the earth, and hath created everything by his word, and all life is from before his face. Why do you worship things that have no spirit in them, or they are the work of men's hands, and on your shoulders do ye bear them, and ye have no help from them? But they are a great cause of shame to those who make them, and a misleading of the heart to those who worship them. Worship them not. And his father said unto him, I also know it, my son. But what shall I do with the people who have made me to serve before them? And if I tell them the truth, they will slay me. For their soul cleaveth to them to worship them and honour them. Keep silent, my son, lest they slay thee. And these words he spoke to his two brothers, and they were angry with him, and he kept silent. And in the fortieth jubilee, in the second week, in the seventh year thereof, Abram took to himself a wife, and her name was Sarai, the daughter of his father, and she became his wife. And Haran, his brother, took to himself a wife in the third year of the third week, and she bare him a son in the seventh year of this week, and he called his name Lot. And Nahor, his brother, took to himself a wife. And in the sixtieth year of the life of Abram, that is, in the fourth week in the fourth year thereof, Abram arose by night and burned the house of the idols. And he burned all that was in the house, and no man knew it. And they arose in the night and sought to save their gods from the midst of the fire. And Haran hasted to save them. But the fire flamed over him, and he was burnt in the fire. And he died in Ur of the Chaldees before Terah his father. And they buried him in Ur of the Chaldees. The family of Terah in Haran. Abram's experiences there. His journey to Canaan. And Terah went forth from Ur of the Chaldees, he and his sons, to go to the land of Lebanon and into the land of Canaan. And he dwelt in the land of Haran. And Abram dwelt with Terah his father in Haran two weeks of years. And in the sixth week, in the fifth year thereof, Abram sat up throughout the night on the new moon of the seventh month to observe the stars from the evening to the morning, in order to see what would be the character of the year with regard to the rains. And he was alone as he sat and observed. And a word came into his heart, and he said, All the signs of the stars and the signs of the moon and of the sun are all in the hand of the Lord. Why do I search them out? If he desireth, he causeth it to rain, morning and evening. And if he desireth, he withholdeth it, and all things are in his hand. And he prayed that night and said, My God, God Most High, Thou alone art my God, and Thee and Thy dominion have I chosen. And Thou hast created all things, and all things that are the work of Thy hands. Deliver me from the hands of evil spirits who have sway over the thoughts of men's hearts, and let them not lead me astray from Thee, my God. And establish Thou me and my seed for ever, that we go not astray from henceforth and for evermore. And he said, Shall I return unto Ur of the Chaldees, who seek my face, that I may return to them? Or am I to remain here in this place? The right path before thee, prosper it in the hands of thy servant, that he may fulfill it, and that I may not walk in the deceitfulness of my heart, O my God. And he made an end of speaking and praying. And behold, the word of the Lord was sent to him through me, saying, Get thee up from thy country and from thy kindred and from the house of thy father unto a land which I shall show thee. And I shall make thee a great and numerous nation. And I shall bless thee. And I shall make thy name great. And thou wilt be blessed in the earth. And in thee will all families of the earth be blessed. 
and I shall bless them that bless thee, and curse them that curse thee. And I shall be a God to thee and thy son, and to thy son's son, and to all thy seed. Fear not, from henceforth and unto all generations of the earth, I am thy God. And the Lord God said, Open his mouth and his ears, that he may hear and speak with his mouth with the language which hath been revealed. For it had ceased from the mouths of all the children of men from the day of the overthrow of Babel. And I opened his mouth and his ears and his lips, and I began to speak with him in Hebrew, in the tongue of the creation. And he took the books of his fathers, and these were written in Hebrew, and he transcribed them, and began from henceforth to study them. And I made known to him that which he could not understand, and he studied them during the six rainy months. And it came to pass in the seventh year of the sixth week that he spoke to his father and informed him that he would leave Haran to go into the land of Canaan to see it and return to him. And Terah his father said unto him, Go in peace. May the eternal God make thy path straight, and the Lord be with thee and protect thee from all evil, and grant unto thee grace, mercy, and favor before those who see thee. And may none of the children of men have power over thee to harm thee. Go in peace. And if thou seest a land pleasant to thy eyes to dwell in, then arise and take me to thee. And take Lot with thee, the son of Haran thy brother, as thine own son. The Lord be with thee. And Nahor thy brother, leave with me till thou returnest in peace and we go with thee all together. Abram with Lot in Canaan and Egypt. Abram separates from Lot. And Abram journeyed from Haran, and he took Sarai his wife and Lot his brother Haran's son to the land of Canaan. And he came into Asher and proceeded to Shechem and dwelt near a lofty oak. And he saw and behold, the land was very pleasant from the entering of Hamath to the lofty oak. And the Lord said to him, To thee and to thy seed will I give this land. And he built an altar there, and he offered thereon a burnt sacrifice to the Lord who had appeared to him. And he removed from thence unto the mountain, Bethel on the west and Ai on the east, and pitched his tent there. And he saw, and behold, the land was very wide and good, and everything grew thereon, vines and figs and pomegranates, oaks and ilexes and terebinths and oil trees and cedars and cypresses and date trees and all trees of the field. And there was water on the mountains. And he blessed the Lord who had led him out of Ur of the Chaldees and had brought him to this land. And it came to pass, in the first year, in the seventh week, on the new moon of the first month, that he built an altar on this mountain, and called on the name of the Lord. Thou, the eternal God, art my God. And he offered on the altar a burnt sacrifice unto the Lord, that he should be with him and not forsake him all the days of his life. And he removed from thence, and went towards the south, and he came to Hebron, and Hebron was built at that time, and he dwelt there two years, and he went from thence into the land of the south to Beeloth, and there was a famine in the land. And Abram went into Egypt in the third year of the week, and he dwelt in Egypt five years before his wife was torn away from him. Now Tanaeus in Egypt was at that time built, seven years after Hebron. And it came to pass, when Pharaoh seized Sarai, the wife of Abram, that the Lord plagued Pharaoh and his house with great plagues, the cause of Sarai, Abram's wife. And Abram was very glorious by reasons of possessions in sheep and cattle and asses and horses and camels and men servants and maid servants and in silver and gold exceedingly. 
and Lot also, his brother's son, was wealthy. And Pharaoh gave back Sarai, the wife of Abram, and he sent him out of the land of Egypt. And he journeyed to the place where he had pitched his tent at the beginning, to the place of the altar, with Ai on the east and Bethel on the west. And he blessed the Lord his God, who had brought him back in peace. And it came to pass, in the forty-first jubilee, in the third year of the first week, that he returned to this place, and offered thereon a burnt sacrifice, and called on the name of the Lord, and said, Thou, the Most High God, art my God for ever and ever. And in the fourth year of this week, Lot parted from him. And Lot dwelt in Sodom, and the men of Sodom were sinners exceedingly. And it grieved him in his heart that his brother's son had parted from him, for he had no children. In that year, when Lot was taken captive, the Lord said unto Abram, after that Lot had parted from him in the fourth year of this week, Lift up thine eyes from the place where thou art dwelling, northward and southward and westward and eastward. For all the land which thou seest I shall give to thee and to thy seed for ever, and I shall make thy seed as the sand of the sea. Though a man may number the dust of the earth, yet thy seed shall not be numbered. Arise, walk through the land in the length of it and the breadth of it, and see it all, for to thy seed shall I give it. And Abram went to Hebron and dwelt there. The Campaign of Kedileama And in this year came Kedileama king of Elam, and Amraphel king of Shinar, and Arioch king of Selassar, and Turgul king of nations, and slew the king of Gomorrah. And the king of Sodom fled, and many fell through wounds in the vale of Siddim by the salt sea. And they took captive Sodom and Adam and Zeboim, and they took captive Lot also, the son of Abram's brother, and all his possessions, and they went to Dan. And one who had escaped came and told Abram that his brother's son had been taken captive. And Abram armed his household servants. For Abram and for his seed a tenth of the first fruits to the Lord. And the Lord ordained it as an ordinance for ever, that they should give it to the priests who served before him, that they should possess it for ever. And to this law there is no limit of days, for he hath ordained it for the generations for ever, that they should give to the Lord the tenth of everything, of the seed and of the wine and of the oil and of the cattle and of the sheep. And he gave it unto the priests to eat and drink with joy before him. And the king of Sodom came to him and bowed himself before him and said, Our Lord Abraham, give unto us the souls which thou hast rescued, but let the booty be thine. And Abraham said unto him, I lift up my hands to the Most High God, that from a thread to a shoe latchet I shall not take aught that is thine, lest thou shouldst say, I have made Abraham rich, save only what the young men have eaten, and the portion of the men who went with me, Ana, Eschol, and Mamre. These will take their portion. God's Covenant with Abram After these things, in the fourth year of this week, on the new moon of the third month, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a dream, saying, Fear not, Abram, I am thy defender and thy reward will be exceeding great. And he said, Lord, Lord, what wilt thou give me, seeing I go hence childless, and the son of Masek, the son of my handmaid, is the Damasek Eliezer? He will be my heir, and to me thou hast given no seed. And he said unto him, This man will not be thy heir, but one that will come out of thine own bowels. He will be thine heir. And he brought him forth abroad and said unto him, Look toward heaven and number the stars, if thou art able to number them. And he looked toward heaven and beheld the stars. And he said unto him, 
so shall thy seed be. And he believed in the Lord, and it was counted to him for righteousness. And he said unto him, I am the Lord that brought thee out of Ur of the Chaldees, to give thee the land of the Canaanites, to possess it for ever. And I shall be God unto thee, and to thy seed after thee. And he said, Lord, Lord, whereby shall I know that I shall inherit it? And he said unto him, Take me an heifer of three years, and a goat of three years, and a sheep of three years, and a turtle dove, and a pigeon. And he took all these in the middle of the month, and he dwelt at the oak of Mamre, which is near Hebron. And he built there an altar, and sacrificed all these. And he poured their blood upon the altar, and divided them in the midst, and laid them over against each other. But the birds divided he not. And the birds came down upon the pieces, and Abram drove them away, and did not suffer the birds to touch them. And it came to pass, when the sun had set, that an ecstasy fell upon Abram. And lo, an horror of great darkness fell upon him, and it was said unto Abram, Know of a surety that thy seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs, and they will bring them into bondage, and afflict them four hundred years. And the nation also to whom they will be in bondage shall I judge, and after that they will come forth thence with much substance. And thou wilt go to thy fathers in peace, and be buried in a good old age. But in the fourth generation they will return hither, for the iniquity of the Amorites is not yet full. And he awoke from his sleep, and he arose, and the sun had set, and there was a flame, and behold, a furnace was smoking, and a flame of fire passed between the pieces. And on that day the Lord made a covenant with Abram, saying, To thy seed will I give this land, from the river of Egypt unto the great river, the river Euphrates, the Kenites and the Kenizzites and the Cadmonites, the Perizzites and the Raphium, the Phacarites and the Hivites and the Amorites and the Canaanites and the Girgashites and the Jebusites. And the day passed. And Abram offered the pieces and the birds and their fruit offerings and their drink offerings, and the fire devoured them. And on that day we made a covenant with Abram, according as we had covenanted with Noah in this month. And Abram renewed the festival and ordinance for himself forever. The Birth of Ishmael and Abram rejoiced and made all these things known to Sarai, his wife. And he believed that he would have seed, but she did not bear. And Sarai advised her husband Abram and said unto him, Go in unto Hagar, my Egyptian maid. It may be that I shall build up seed unto thee by her. And Abram hearkened to the voice of Sarai, his wife, and said unto her, Do so. And Sarai took Hagar, her maid, the Egyptian, and gave her to Abram, her husband, to be his wife. And he went in unto her, and she conceived and bare him a son. And he called his name Ishmael in the fifth year of this week. And this was the eighty-sixth year in the life of Abram. The Feast of First Fruits, Circumcision Instituted the promise of Isaac's birth, circumcision ordained for all Israel. And in the fifth year of the fourth week of this jubilee, in the third month, in the middle of the month, Abram celebrated the feast of the first fruits of the grain harvest. And he offered new offerings on the altar, the first fruits of the produce unto the Lord, an heifer and a goat and a sheep on the altar as a burnt sacrifice unto the Lord. Their fruit offerings and their drink offerings he offered upon the altar with frankincense. And the Lord appeared to Abram and said unto him, I am God Almighty. Approve thyself before me 
and be thou perfect. And I will make my covenant between me and thee, and I will multiply thee exceedingly. And Abram fell on his face, and God talked with him, and said, Behold, my ordinance is with thee, and thou wilt be the father of many nations. Neither will thy name any more be called Abram, but thy name from henceforth, even for ever, shall be Abraham. For the father of many nations have I made thee. And I will make thee very great, and I will make thee into nations, and kings will come forth from thee. And I shall establish my covenant between me and thee and thy seed after thee throughout their generations for an eternal covenant, so that I may be a God unto thee and to thy seed after thee. And I shall give to thee and to thy seed after thee the land where thou hast been a sojourner, the land of Canaan, that thou mayest possess it for ever. And I shall be their God. And the Lord said unto Abraham, And as for thee, do thou keep my covenant, thou and thy seed after thee, and circumcise ye every male among you, and circumcise your foreskins, and it will be a token of an eternal covenant between me and you. And the child on the eighth day ye will circumcise every male throughout your generations, him that is born in the house, or whom ye have bought with money from any stranger whom ye have acquired, who is not of thy seed. He that is born in thy house will surely be circumcised, and those whom thou hast bought with money will be circumcised, and my covenant will be in your flesh for an eternal ordinance. And the uncircumcised male who is not circumcised in the flesh of his foreskin on the eighth day, that soul will be cut off from his people, for he hath broken my covenant. And God said unto Abraham, As for Sarai thy wife, her name will no more be called Sarai, but Sarah will be her name. And I shall bless her, and give thee a son by her. And I shall bless him, and he will become a nation, and kings of nations will proceed from him. And Abraham fell on his face and rejoiced, and said in his heart, Shall a son be born to him that is a hundred years old? And shall Sarah, who is ninety years old, bring forth? And Abraham said unto God, O oh, that Ishmael might live before thee. And God said, Yea, and Sarah also will bear thee a son, and thou wilt call his name Isaac, and I shall establish my covenant with him, an everlasting covenant, and for his seed after him. And as for Ishmael, also I have heard thee. And behold, I shall bless him, and make him great, and multiply him exceedingly. And he will beget twelve princes, and I shall make him a great nation. But my covenant shall I establish with Isaac, whom Sarah will bear to thee in these days, in the next year. And he left off speaking with him. And God went up from Abraham. And Abraham did according as God had said unto him. And he took Ishmael his son, and all that were born in his house, and to whom he had bought with his money every male in his house, and circumcised the flesh of their foreskin. And on the selfsame day was Abraham circumcised, and all the men of his house, and those born in the house, and all those whom he had bought with money from the children of the stranger, were circumcised with him. This law is for all the generations for ever. And there is no circumcision of the days, and no omission of one day out of the eight days, for it is an eternal ordinance, ordained and written on the heavenly tables. And every one that is born, the flesh of whose foreskin is not circumcised on the eighth day, belongeth not to the children of the covenant which the Lord made with Abraham, but to the children of destruction. Nor is there, moreover, any sign on him that he is the Lord's, but he is destined to be destroyed and slain from the earth, and to be rooted out of the earth, for he hath broken the covenant of the Lord our God. For all the angels of the presence and all the angels of sanctification have been so created from the day of their creation, and before the angels of the presence and the angels of sanctification 
he hath sanctified Israel, that they should be with him and with his holy angels. And do thou command the children of Israel, and let them observe the sign of this covenant for their generations as an eternal ordinance, and they will not be rooted out of the land. For the command is ordained for a covenant that they should observe it for ever among all the children of Israel. For Ishmael and his sons and his brothers and Esau, the Lord did not cause to approach him, and he chose them not because they are the children of Abraham, because he knew them, but he chose Israel to be his people. And he sanctified it and gathered it from amongst all the children of men. For there are many nations and many peoples, and all are his, and over all hath he placed spirits in authority to lead them astray from him. But over Israel he did not appoint any angel or spirit, for he alone is their ruler, and he will preserve them and require them at the hand of his angels and his spirits and at the hand of all his powers, in order that he may preserve them and bless them, and that they may be his and he may be theirs from henceforth for ever. And now I announce unto thee that the children of Israel will not keep true to this ordinance, and they will not circumcise their sons according to all this law. For in the flesh of their circumcision they will omit this circumcision of their sons, and all of them, sons of Belia, will leave their sons uncircumcised as they were born. And there will be great wrath from the Lord against the children of Israel, because they have forsaken his covenant and turned aside from his word and provoked and blasphemed, inasmuch as they did not observe the ordinance of this law. For they have treated their members like the Gentiles, so that they may be removed and rooted out of the land. And there will no more be pardon or forgiveness unto them, so that there should be forgiveness and pardon for all the sin of this eternal error. Angelic Visitation of Abraham in Hebron Promise of Isaac's birth repeated The destruction of Sodom and Lot's deliverance And on the new moon of the fourth month we appeared unto Abraham at the oak of Mamre, and we talked with him, and we announced to him that a son would be given to him by Sarah his wife. And Sarah laughed, for she heard that we had spoken these words with Abraham. And we admonished her, and she became afraid, and denied that she had laughed on account of the words. And we told her the name of her son, as his name is ordained and written in the heavenly tables, Isaac. And that when we returned to her at a set time, she would have conceived a son. And in this month the Lord executed his judgments on Sodom and Gomorrah, and Zeboim, and all the region of the Jordan. And he burned them with fire and brimstone, and destroyed them until this day. Even as, lo, I have declared unto thee all their works, that they are wicked and sinners exceedingly, and that they defile themselves, and commit fornication in their flesh, and work uncleanness on the earth. And in like manner, God will execute judgment on the places where they have done according to the uncleanness of the Sodomites like unto the judgment of Sodom. But Lot we saved, for God remembered Abraham and sent him out from the midst of the overthrow. And he and his daughters committed sin upon the earth, such as had not been on the earth since the days of Adam till this time. For the man lay with his daughters. And behold, it was commanded and engraven concerning all his seed on the heavenly tables to remove them and root them out and to execute judgment upon them like the judgment of Sodom, and to leave no seed of the man on earth on the day of condemnation. Abraham at Beersheba Birth and Circumcision of Isaac Institution of the Feast of the Tabernacles And in this month Abraham moved from Hebron, and departed and dwelt between Kadesh and Shur in the mountains of Gerar. And in the middle of the fifth month he moved from thence and dwelt at the well of the oath. And in the middle of the sixth month the Lord visited Sarah and did unto her as he had spoken, and she conceived. And she bare a son in the third month, 
and in the middle of the month, at the time of which the Lord had spoken to Abraham on the festival of the first fruits of the harvest, Isaac was born. And Abraham circumcised his son on the eighth day. He was the first that was circumcised according to the covenant which is ordained for ever. And in the sixth year of the fourth week, we came to Abraham, to the well of the oath. And we appeared unto him, and we blessed him, and we announced to him all the things which had been decreed concerning him, that he should not die till he should beget six sons more, and should see them before he died, but that in Isaac should his name and seed be called, and that all the seed of his sons should be Gentiles, and be reckoned with the Gentiles, that from the sons of Isaac one should become a holy seed, and should not be reckoned among the Gentiles, for he should become the portion of the Most High and all his seed had fallen into the possession of God, that it should be unto the Lord a people for his possession above all nations, and that it should become a kingdom and priests and a holy nation. And we went our way, and we announced to Sarah all that we had told him, and they both rejoiced with exceeding great joy. And he built there an altar to the Lord who had delivered him, and who was making him rejoice in the land of his sojourning. And he celebrated a festival of joy in this month, seven days, near the altar which he had built at the well of the oath. And he built booths for himself and for his servants on this festival, and he was the first to celebrate the Feast of Tabernacles on the earth. And during these seven days, He brought each day to the altar a burnt offering to the Lord, two oxen, two rams, seven sheep, one he-goat, for a sin offering, that he might atone thereby for himself and for his seed. And as a thank offering, seven rams, seven kids, seven sheep, and seven he-goats, and their fruit offerings and their drink offerings. And he burnt all the fat thereof on the altar, a chosen offering unto the Lord for a sweet-smelling savour. And morning and evening he burnt fragrant substances, frankincense and galbanum and stacked, and nard and myrrh and spice and costum, all these seven he offered, crushed, mixed together in equal parts and pure. And he celebrated this feast during seven days, rejoicing with all his heart and with all his soul he and all those who were in his house, and there was no stranger with him, nor any that was uncircumcised. And he blessed his Creator who had created him in his generation, for he had created him according to his good pleasure, for he knew and perceived that from him would arise the plant of righteousness for the eternal generations, and from him a holy seed, so that it should become like him who had made all things. And he blessed and rejoiced, and he called the name of this festival the Festival of the Lord, a joy acceptable to the Most High God. And we blessed him for ever, and all his seed after him throughout all the generations of the earth, because he celebrated this festival in its season according to the testimony of the heavenly tables. For this reason it is ordained on the heavenly tables concerning Israel that they shall celebrate the Feast of Tabernacles seven days with joy in the seventh month acceptable before the Lord, a statute for ever throughout their generations every year. And to this there is no limit of days, for it is ordained for ever regarding Israel that they should celebrate it and dwell in booths and set wreaths upon their heads, and take leafy boughs and willows from the brook. And Abraham took branches of palm trees, and the fruit of goodly trees, and every day going round the altar with the branches seven times a day in the morning, he praised and gave thanks to his God for all things in joy. The Expulsion of Hagar and Ishmael. And in the first year of the fifth week, Isaac was weaned in this jubilee. 
And Abraham made a great banquet in the third month on the day his son Isaac was weaned. And Ishmael, the son of Hagar the Egyptian, was before the face of Abraham his father in his place. And Abraham rejoiced and blessed God because he had seen his sons and had not died childless. And he remembered the words which he had spoken to him on the day on which Lot had parted from him. And he rejoiced because the Lord had given him seed upon the earth to inherit the earth. And he blessed with all his mouth the Creator of all things. And Sarah saw Ishmael playing and dancing with Abraham, rejoicing with great joy. And she became jealous of Ishmael and said to Abraham, Cast out this bondwoman and her son, for the son of this bondwoman will not be heir with my son Isaac. And the thing was grievous in Abraham's sight, because of his maidservant and because of his son, that he should drive them from him. And God said to Abraham, Let it not be grievous in thy sight because of the child and because of the bondwoman. In all that Sarah hath said unto thee, hearken to her words and do them. For in Isaac shall thy name and seed be called. But as for the son of this bondwoman, I will make him a great nation, because he is of thy seed. And Abraham rose up early in the morning and took bread and a bottle of water and placed them on the shoulders of Hagar and the child and sent her away. And she departed and wandered in the wilderness of Beersheba. And the water in the bottle was spent. And the child thirsted, was not able to go on, and fell down. And his mother took him, and cast him under an olive tree, and went and sat her down over against him at the distance of a bowshot, for she said, Let me not see the death of my child. And as she sat, she wept. And an angel of God, one of the holy ones, said unto her, Why weepest thou, Hagar? Arise, take the child, and hold him in thine hand. For God hath heard thy voice, and hath seen the child. And she opened her eyes, and she saw a well of water. And she went and filled her bottle with water, and gave her child to drink. And she arose, and went towards the wilderness of Paran. And the child grew, and became an archer, and God was with him. And his mother took him a wife from among the daughters of Egypt. And she bare him a son, and he called his name Nebaioth. For she said, The Lord was nigh to me when I called upon him. Mastema proposes to God that Abraham shall be put to the proof. And it came to pass in the seventh week, in the first year thereof, in the first month in this jubilee, on the twelfth of this month, there were voices in heaven regarding Abraham that he was faithful in all that he told him, and that he loved the Lord, and that in every affliction he was faithful. And the prince Mastema came and said before God, Behold, Abraham loveth Isaac his son, and he delighteth in him above all things else. Bid him offer him as a burnt offering on the altar, and thou wilt see if he will do this command, and thou wilt know if he is faithful in everything wherein thou dost try him. And the Lord knew that Abraham was faithful in all his afflictions, for he had tried him through his country and with famine, and had tried him with the wealth of kings, and had tried him again through his wife when she was torn from him, and with circumcision, and had tried him through Ishmael and Hagar his maidservant when he sent them away. And in everything wherein he had tried him, he was found faithful. And his soul was not impatient, and he was not slow to act, for he was faithful and a lover of the Lord. The Sacrifice of Isaac Abraham returns to Beersheba. And God said to him, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, Behold, here am I. And he said, Take thy beloved son, whom thou lovest, even Isaac, and go unto the high country, and offer him 
on one of the mountains which I will point out unto thee. And he rose early in the morning and saddled his ass, and took his two young men with him, and Isaac his son, and clave the wood of the burnt offering. And he went to the place on the third day, and he saw the place afar off. And he came to a well of water, and he said to his young men, Abide ye here with the ass, and I and the lad shall go yonder. And when we have worshipped, we shall come again to you. And he took the wood of the burnt offering, and laid it on Isaac his son. And he took in his hand the fire and the knife, and they went, both of them, together to that place. And Isaac said to his father, Father, and he said, Here am I, my son. And he said unto him, Behold the fire and the knife and the wood. But where is the sheep for the burnt offering, father? And he said, God will provide for himself a sheep for the burnt offering, my son. And he drew near to the place of the mount of God. And he built an altar, and he placed the wood on the altar, and bound Isaac his son, and placed him on the wood which was upon the altar, and stretched forth his hand to take the knife to slay Isaac his son. And I stood before him, and before the prince of the Mastema. And the Lord said, Bid him not to lay his hand on the lad, nor to do anything to him, for I have shown that he feareth the Lord. And I called to him from heaven, and said unto him, Abraham, Abraham! And he was terrified, and said, Behold, here am I. And I said unto him, Lay not thy hand upon the lad, neither do thou anything to him. For now I have shown that thou fearest the Lord, and hast not withheld thy son, thy firstborn son, from me. And the prince of the Mastema was put to shame. And Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, a single ram caught by his horns. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered it for a burnt offering in the stead of his son. And Abraham called that place, The Lord hath seen, so that it is said, In the mount the Lord hath seen, that is, Mount Sion. And the Lord called Abraham by his name a second time from heaven, as he caused us to appear to speak to him in the name of the Lord. And he said, By myself have I sworn, saith the Lord, because thou hast done this thing, and has not withheld thy son, thy beloved son, from me, that in blessing I shall bless thee, and in multiplying I shall multiply thy seed as the stars of heaven, and as the sand which is on the seashore. And thy seed will inherit the cities of its enemies, and in thy seed will all nations of the earth be blessed, because thou hast obeyed my voice. And I have shown to all that thou art faithful unto me in all that I have said unto thee. Go in peace. And Abraham went to his young men, and they arose and went together to Beersheba. And Abraham dwelt by the well of the oath. And he celebrated this festival every year, seven days with joy. And he called it the festival of the Lord according to the seven days during which he went and returned in peace. And accordingly hath it been ordained and written on the heavenly tables regarding Israel and its seed, that they should observe this festival seven days with the joy of festival. The Death and Burial of Sarah and in the first year of the first week, in the forty-second jubilee, Abraham returned and dwelt opposite Hebron, that is, Kirjath Arba, two weeks of years. And in the first year of the third week of this jubilee, the days of the life of Sarah were accomplished, and she died in Hebron. And Abraham went to mourn over her and bury her, and we tried him to see if his spirit were patient 
and if he were not indignant in the words of his mouth. And he was found patient in this, and was not disturbed. For in patience of spirit he conversed with the children of Heth, to the intent that they should give him a place in which to bury his dead. And the Lord gave him grace before all who saw him. And he besought in gentleness the sons of Heth, and they gave him the land of the double cave over against Mamre, that is Hebron, for four hundred pieces of silver. And they besought him, saying, We shall give it to thee for nothing. But he would not take it from their hands for nothing, for he gave the price of the place, the money, in full. And he bowed down before them twice, and after this he buried his dead in the double cave. And all the days of the life of Sarah were one hundred and twenty-seven years, that is, two jubilees and four weeks and one year. These are the days of the years of the life of Sarah. This is the tenth trial wherewith Abraham was tried, and he was found faithful, patient in spirit. And he said not a single word regarding the rumor in the land, how that God had said that he would give it to him and to his seed after him. And he begged a place there to bury his dead, for he was found faithful, and was recorded on the heavenly tables as the friend of God. Marriage of Isaac and Second Marriage of Abraham The Birth of Esau and Jacob And in the fourth year thereof he took a wife for his son Isaac, and her name was Rebekah, the sister of Laban, the daughter of Bethuel, and Bethuel was the daughter of Melchah, who was the wife of Nahor, the brother of Abraham. And Abraham took to himself a third wife, and her name was Keturah, from among the daughters of his household servants, for Hagar had died before Sarah. And she bare him six sons, Zimram, and Jokshan, and Medan, and Midian, and Ishbak, and Shua, in the two weeks of years. And in the sixth week, in the second year thereof, Rebekah bare to Isaac two sons, Jacob and Esau. And Jacob was a smooth and upright man, and Esau was fierce, a man of the field and hairy, and Jacob dwelt in tents. And the youths grew, and Jacob learned to write, but Esau did not learn, for he was a man of the field and a hunter, and he learned war, and all his deeds were fierce. Abraham loves Jacob and blesses him. And Abraham loved Jacob, but Isaac loved Esau. And Abraham saw the deeds of Esau, and he knew that in Jacob should his name and seed be called. And he called Rebekah and gave commandment regarding Jacob, for he knew that she too loved Jacob much more than Esau. And he said unto her, My daughter, watch over my son Jacob, for he shall be in my stead on the earth and for a blessing in the midst of the children of men, and for the glory of the whole seed of Shem. For I know that the Lord will choose him to be a people for possession unto himself above all peoples that are upon the face of the earth. And behold, Isaac my son loveth Esau more than Jacob, but I see that thou truly lovest Jacob, and add still further to thy kindness to him and let thine eyes be upon him in love, for he will be a blessing unto us on the earth from henceforth unto all generations of the earth. Let thy hands be strong, and let thy heart rejoice in thy son Jacob, for I have loved him far beyond all my sons. He will be blessed for ever, and his seed will fill the whole earth. If a man can number the sand of the earth, his seed also will be numbered. And all the blessings wherewith the Lord hath blessed me and my seed shall belong to Jacob and his seed alway. And in his seed shall my name be blessed, and the name of my fathers Shem and Noah and Enoch and Mahalalel and Enos and Seth and Adam. And these shall serve to lay the foundations of the heaven 
and to strengthen the earth, and to renew all the luminaries which are in the firmament. And he called Jacob before the eyes of Rebekah his mother, and kissed him and blessed him, and said, Jacob, my beloved son, whom my soul loveth, may God bless thee from above the firmament, and may he give thee all the blessings wherewith he blessed Adam and Enoch and Noah and Shem, and all the things of which he told me, and all the things which he promised to give me, may he cause to cleave to thee and to thy seed for ever, according to the days of heaven above the earth. And the spirits of Mastema shall not rule over thee, or over thy seed, to turn thee from the Lord, who is thy God, from henceforth for ever. And may the Lord God be a father to thee, and thou the firstborn son, and to the people alway. Go in peace, my son. And they both went forth together from Abraham. And Rebekah loved Jacob with all her heart and with all her soul very much more than Esau. But Isaac loved Esau much more than Jacob. Abraham's Last Words to His Children and Grandchildren And in the forty-second jubilee, in the first year of the seventh week, Abraham called Ishmael and his twelve sons and Isaac and his two sons, and the six sons of Keturah and their sons. And he commanded them that they should observe the way of the Lord, that they should work righteousness and love each his neighbor, and act on this manner amongst all men, that they should each so walk with regard to them as to do judgment and righteousness on the earth that they should circumcise their sons according to the covenant which he had made with them, and not deviate to the right hand or to the left of all the paths which the Lord had commanded us, and that we should keep ourselves from all fornication and uncleanness. And if any woman or maid commit fornication amongst you, burn her with fire, and let them not commit fornication with her after their eyes and their heart and let them not take to themselves wives from the daughters of Canaan, for the seed of Canaan will be rooted out of the land. And he told them of the judgment of the giants, and the judgment of the Sodomites, how they had been judged on account of their wickedness, and had died on account of their fornication and uncleanness and mutual corruption through fornication. And guard yourselves, from all fornication and uncleanness, and from all pollution of sin, lest ye make our name a curse, and your whole life a hissing, and all your sons be destroyed by the sword, and ye become accursed like Sodom, and all your remnant as the sons of Gomorrah. I implore you, my sons, love the God of heaven, and cleave ye to all his commandments, and walk not after their idols and after their uncleannesses, and make not for yourselves molten or graven gods, for they are vanity, and there is no spirit in them, for they are work of men's hands, and all who trust in them trust in nothing. Serve them not, nor worship them, but serve ye the Most High God, and worship Him continually, and hope for His countenance always, and work uprightness and righteousness before him, that he may have pleasure in you and grant you his mercy, and send rain upon you morning and evening, and bless all your works which ye have wrought upon the earth, and bless thy bread and thy water, and bless the fruit of thy womb, and the fruit of thy land, and the herds of thy cattle, and the flocks of thy sheep. And ye will be for a blessing on the earth, and all nations of the earth will desire you and bless your sons in my name, that they may be blessed as I am. And he gave to Ishmael and to his sons and to the sons of Keturah gifts, and he sent them away from Isaac his son, and he gave everything to Isaac his son. The Dwelling Places of the Ishmaelites and of the Sons of Keturah 
And Ishmael and his sons and the sons of Keturah and their sons went together and dwelt from Paran to the entering in of Babylon in all the land which is towards the east facing the desert. And these mingled with each other, and their name was called Arabs and Ishmaelites. Abraham's Last Words to Isaac And in the sixth year of the seventh week of this jubilee, Abraham called Isaac his son and commanded him, saying, I am become old, and know not the day of my death, and am full of my days. And behold, I am one hundred and seventy-five years old, and throughout all the days of my life I have remembered the Lord, and sought with all my heart to do his will, and to walk uprightly in all his ways. My soul hath hated idols, and I have despised those that serve them, and I have given my heart and spirit that I might observe to do the will of him who created me. For he is the living God, and he is holy and faithful, and he is righteous beyond all, and there is with him no accepting of men's persons and no accepting of gifts. For God is righteous and executeth judgment on all those who transgress his commandments and despise his covenant. And do thou, my son, observe his commandments and his ordinances and his judgments, and walk not after the abominations and after the graven images and after the molten images, and eat no blood at all of animals or cattle or of any bird which flieth in the heaven. And if thou dost slay a victim as an acceptable peace offering, Slay ye it, and pour out its blood upon the altar, and all the fat of the offering offer on the altar with fine flour, and the meat offering mingled with oil with its drink offering. Offer them all together on the altar of burnt offering, for it is a sweet savour before the Lord. And thou wilt offer the fat of the sacrifice of thanks offerings on the fire which is upon the altar, and the fat which is on the belly and all the fat on the inwards, and the two kidneys, and all the fat that is upon them, and upon the loins and the liver thou shalt remove together with the kidneys, and offer all these for a sweet savour acceptable before the Lord, with its meat offering and with its drink offering, for a sweet savour, the bread of the offering unto the Lord, and eat its meat on that day and on the second day, and let not the sun on the second day go down upon it till it is eaten, and let nothing be left over for the third day, for it is not acceptable, and let it no longer be eaten, and all who eat thereof will bring sin upon themselves. For thus I have found it written in the books of my forefathers, and in the words of Enoch, and in the words of Noah, and on all thy oblations thou shalt strew salt, and let not the salt of the covenant be lacking in all thy oblations before the Lord. And as regard the wood of the sacrifices, beware lest thou bring other wood for the altar in addition to these, cypress, dephran, sagad, pine, fir, cedar, savin, palm, olive, myrrh, laurel, and citron, juniper, and balsam. And of these kinds of wood lay upon the altar under the sacrifice such as have been tested as to their appearance, and do not lay thereon any split or dark wood, but hard and clean, without fault, a sound and new growth. And do not lay thereon old wood, for its fragrance is gone, for there is no longer fragrance in it as before. Besides these kinds of wood, there is none other that thou shalt place on the altar, for the fragrance is dispersed, and the smell of its fragrance goeth not up to heaven. Observe this commandment, and do it, my son, that thou mayest be upright in all thy deeds. And at all times be clean in thy body, and wash thyself with water before thou approachest to offer on the altar. And wash thy hands and thy feet before thou drawest near to the altar. And when thou art done sacrificing, wash again thy hands and thy feet. And let no blood appear upon you nor upon your clothes. Be on guard, my son, against blood. Be on guard exceedingly. 
cover it with dust, and do not eat any blood, for it is the soul. Eat no blood whatever. And take no gifts for the blood of man, lest it be shed with impunity, without judgment. For it is the blood that is shed that causeth the earth to sin. And the earth cannot be cleansed from the blood of man, save by the blood of him who shed it. And take no present or gift for the blood of man, blood for blood, that thou mayest be accepted before the Lord the Most High God. For he is the defense of the good, and that thou mayest be preserved from all evil, and that he may save thee from every kind of death. I see, my son, that all the works of the children of men are sin and wickedness, and all their deeds are uncleanness and an abomination and a pollution, and there is no righteousness with them. Beware, lest thou shouldest walk in their ways and tread in their paths, and sin as sin unto death before the Most High God, else he will hide his face from thee and give thee back into the hands of thy transgression and root thee out of the land, and thy seed likewise from under heaven, and thy name and thy seed will perish from the whole earth. Turn away from all their deeds and all their uncleanness, and observe the ordinance of the Most High God, and do his will, and be upright in all things. And he will bless thee in all thy deeds, and will raise up from thee the plant of righteousness through all the earth, throughout all generations of the earth. And my name and thy name will not be forgotten unto heaven forever. Go, my son, in peace. May the Most High God, my God, and thy God strengthen thee to do his will. And may he bless all thy seed and the residue of thy seed for the generations forever with all righteous blessings, that thou mayest be a blessing on all the earth. And he went out from him rejoicing. Isaac, Ishmael, and Jacob join in festival with Abraham for the last time. Abraham's Prayer And it came to pass, in the first week in the forty-fourth jubilee in the second year, that is, the year in which Abraham died, that Isaac and Ishmael came from the well of the oath to celebrate the Feast of Weeks, that is, the Feast of the first fruits of the Harvest, to Abraham their father. And Abraham rejoiced, because his two sons had come. For Isaac had many possessions in Beersheba, and Isaac was wont to go and see his possessions, and to return to his father. And in those days Ishmael came to see his father, and they both came together, and Isaac offered a sacrifice for a burnt offering, and presented it on the altar of his father, which he had made in Hebron. And he offered a thank offering, and made a feast of joy before Ishmael his brother. And Rebekah made new cakes from the new grain, and gave them to Jacob her son, to take them to Abraham his father, from the first fruits of the land, that he might eat and bless the Creator of all things before he died. And Isaac too sent by the hand of Jacob to Abraham a best thank offering, that he might eat and drink. And he ate and drank, and blessed the Most High God, who hath created heaven and earth, who made all the fat things of the earth, and given them to the children of men, that they might eat and drink and bless their Creator. And now I give thanks unto thee, my God, because thou hast caused me to see this day. Behold, I am one hundred threescore and fifteen years, an old man and full of days, and all my days have been unto me peace. The sword of the adversary hath not overcome me in all that thou hast given me and my children all the days of my life until this day. My God, May thy mercy and thy peace be upon thy servant, and upon the seed of his sons, that they may be to thee a chosen nation, and an inheritance from amongst all the nations of the earth, from henceforth unto all the days of the generations of the earth. 
unto all ages. Abraham's last words too, and blessings of Jacob. And he called Jacob and said, My son Jacob, may the God of all bless thee and strengthen thee to do righteousness and his will before him. And may he choose thee and thy seed, that ye may become a people for his inheritance, according to his will alway. And do thou, my son Jacob, draw near and kiss me. And he drew near and kissed him, and he said, Blessed be my son Jacob, and all the sons of God Most High unto all the ages. May God give unto thee a seed of righteousness, and some of thy sons may he sanctify in the midst of the whole earth. May nations serve thee, and all the nations bow themselves before thy seed. Be strong in the presence of men, and exercise authority over all the seed of Seth. Then thy ways and the ways of thy sons will be justified, so that they shall become a holy nation. May the Most High God give thee all the blessings wherewith he hath blessed me, and wherewith he blessed Noah and Adam. May they rest on the sacred head of thy seed from generation to generation for ever. And may he cleanse thee from all unrighteousness and impurity, that thou mayest be forgiven all thy transgressions and the sins of thy ignorance, and may he strengthen thee and bless thee, and mayest thou inherit the whole earth. And may he renew his covenant with thee, that thou mayest be to him a nation for his inheritance for all the ages, and that he may be to thee and to thy seed a God in truth and righteousness throughout all the days of the earth. And do thou, my son Jacob, remember my words, and observe the commandments of Abraham thy father. Separate thyself from the nations, and eat not with them, and do not according to their works, and become not their associate, for their works are unclean and all their ways are a pollution and an abomination and uncleanness. They offer their sacrifices to the dead, and they worship evil spirits, and they eat over the graves, and all their works are vanity and nothingness. They have no heart to understand, and their eyes do not see what their works are, and how they err in saying to a piece of wood, Thou art my God, and to a stone, Thou art my Lord, and thou art my Deliverer. As for thee, my son Jacob, may the Most High God help thee, and may the God of heaven bless thee, and remove thee from their uncleanness and from all their error. Be thou ware, my son Jacob, of taking a wife from any seed of the daughters of Canaan, for all his seed is to be rooted out of the earth. For Owing to the transgression of Ham, Canaan erred, and all his seed will be destroyed from off the earth and all the residue thereof, and none springing from him will be saved on the day of judgment. And as for all the worshippers of idols and the profane, there'll be no hope for them in the land of the living, and there'll be no remembrance of them on the earth, for they will descend into Sheol and into the place of condemnation will they go. As the children of Sodom were taken away from the earth, so will all those who worship idols be taken away. Fear not, my son Jacob, and be not dismayed, O son of Abraham. May the Most High God preserve thee from destruction, and from all the paths of error may he deliver thee. This house have I built for myself, that I might put my name upon it in the earth. It is given to thee and to thy seed for ever, and will be named the house of Abraham. It is given to thee and to thy seed for ever, for thou wilt build my houses and establish my name before God for ever. Thy seed and thy name will stand throughout all generations of the earth. And he ceased commanding him and blessing him. And the two lay together on one bed, and Jacob slept in the bosom of Abraham, his father's father. And he kissed him seven times, and his affection 
and his heart rejoiced over him. And he blessed him with all his heart and said, The Most High God, the God of all, and the Creator of all, who brought me forth from Ur of the Chaldees, that he might give me this land to inherit it for ever, and that I might establish a holy seed, blessed be the Most High for ever. And he blessed Jacob and said, My son, over whom with all my heart and my affection I rejoice, may thy grace and thy mercy be lifted up upon him and upon his seed alway, and do not forsake him, nor set him at naught from henceforth unto the days of eternity. And may thine eyes be opened upon him and upon his seed, that thou mayest preserve him and bless him, and mayest sanctify him as a nation for thine inheritance, and bless him with all thy blessings from henceforth unto all the days of eternity, and renew thy covenant and thy grace with him and with his seed according to all thy good pleasure unto all the generations of the earth. The Death and Burial of Abraham And he placed two fingers of Jacob on his eyes, and he blessed the God of gods. And he covered his face, and stretched out his feet, and slept the sleep of eternity, and was gathered to his fathers. And notwithstanding all this, Jacob was lying in his bosom, and knew not that Abraham his father's father was dead. And Jacob awoke from his sleep, and behold, Abraham was cold as ice. And he said, Father, Father, and there was none that spake, and he knew that he was dead. And he arose from his bosom, and ran and told Rebekah his mother. And Rebekah went to Isaac in the night, and told him, and they went together, and Jacob with them, and a lamp was in his hand. And when they'd gone in, they found Abraham lying dead. And Isaac fell on the face of his father, and wept, and kissed him. And the voices were heard in the house of Abraham. And Ishmael his son arose, and went to Abraham his father, and wept over Abraham his father, he and all the house of Abraham. And they wept with a great weeping. And his sons, Isaac and Ishmael, buried him in the double cave near Sarah his wife. And they wept for him forty days, all the men of his house, and Isaac and Ishmael and all their sons, and all the sons of Keturah in their places, and the days of weeping for Abraham were ended. And he lived three jubilees and four weeks of years, one hundred and seventy-five years, and completed the days of his life, being old and full of days. The Decreasing Years and Increasing Corruption of Mankind for the days of the forefathers of their life were nineteen jubilees, and after the flood they began to grow less than nineteen jubilees, and to decrease in jubilees, and to grow old quickly, and to be full of their days by reason of manifold tribulation and the wickedness of their ways, with the exception of Abraham. For Abraham was perfect in all his deeds with the Lord and well-pleasing in righteousness all the days of his life. And behold, he did not complete four jubilees in his life when he had grown old by reason of the wickedness, and was full of his days. And all the generations which will arise from this time until the day of the great judgment will grow old quickly before they complete two jubilees, and their knowledge will forsake them by reason of their old age. And in those days, if a man live a jubilee and a half of years, they will say regarding him, He hath lived long, and the greater part of his days are pain and sorrow and tribulation, and there is no peace. For calamity followeth on calamity, and wound on wound, and tribulation on tribulation, and evil tidings on evil tidings, and illness on illness, 
and all evil judgments such as these, one with another, illness and overthrow and snow and frost and ice and fever and chills and torpor and famine and death and sword and captivity and all kinds of calamities and pains. And all these will come on an evil generation which transgresseth on the earth. And their works are uncleanness and fornication and pollution and abominations. Then they will say, The days of the forefathers were many, even unto a thousand years, and were good. But behold, the days of our life, if a man hath lived many, are threescore years and ten, and if he's strong, fourscore years, and those evil. And there's no peace in the days of this evil generation. And in that generation the sons will convict their fathers and the elders of sin and unrighteousness and of the words of their mouth and the great wickednesses which they perpetrate, and concerning their forsaking the covenant which the Lord made between them and him, that they should observe and do all his commandments and his ordinances and all his laws, without departing either to the right hand or to the left. For all have done evil and every mouth speaketh iniquity, and all their works are an uncleanness and an abomination, and all their ways are pollution, uncleanness, and destruction. The Messianic Woes Behold, the earth will be destroyed on account of all their works, and there will be no seed of the vine and no oil, for their works are altogether faithless, and they will all perish together, beasts and cattle and birds and all the fish of the sea on account of the children of men. And they will strive one with another, the young with the old and the old with the young, the poor with the rich and the lowly with the great and the beggar with the prince on account of the law and the covenant. For they have forgotten commandment and covenant and feasts and months and sabbaths and jubilees and all judgments. And they will stand with bows and swords and war to turn them back into the way. But they will not return until much blood hath been shed on the earth one by another. And those who have escaped will not return from their wickedness to the ways of righteousness, but they will all exalt themselves to deceit and wealth, that they may each take all that is his neighbor's. And they will name the great name, but not in truth and not in righteousness, and they will defile the holy of holies with their uncleanness and the corruption of their pollution. And a great punishment will befall the deeds of this generation from the Lord. And he will give them over to the sword and to judgment and to captivity and to be plundered and devoured. And he will wake up against them the sinners of the Gentiles who have neither mercy nor compassion and who will respect the person of none, neither old nor young nor anyone for they are more wicked and strong to do evil than all the children of men. And they will use violence against Israel and transgression against Jacob, and much blood will be shed upon the earth, and there will be none to gather and none to bury. In those days they will cry aloud and call and pray that they may be saved from the hand of the sinners, the Gentiles, but none will be saved. And the heads of the children will be white with gray hair, and a child of three weeks will appear old like a man of one hundred years, and their stature will be destroyed by tribulation and oppression. Renewed study of the law, followed by a renewal of mankind, the messianic kingdom, and the blessedness of the righteous. And in those days, the children will begin to study the laws and to seek the commandments and to return to the path of righteousness. And the days will begin to grow many and increase amongst those children of men till their days draw nigh to one thousand years and to a greater number of years than before was the number of the days. And there will be no old man nor one who is not satisfied with his days, for all will be as children and youths, and all their days they will complete and live in peace and in joy, and there'll be no Satan nor any evil destroyer, for all their days will be days of blessing and healing. And at that time 
the Lord will heal his servants, and they will rise up and see great peace and drive out their adversaries, and the righteous will see and be thankful and rejoice with joy for ever and ever, and will see all their judgments and all their curses on their enemies. And their bones will rest in the earth, and their spirits will have much joy. And they will know that it is the Lord who executeth judgment, and showeth mercy to hundreds and thousands, and to all that love him. And do thou, Moses, write down these words, for thus are they written, and they record them on the heavenly tables, for a testimony for the generations forever. Isaac at the Well of Vision Esau sells his birthright. And it came to pass after the death of Abraham that the Lord blessed Isaac his son. And he arose from Hebron and went and dwelt at the well of the vision in the first year of the third week of this jubilee, seven years. And in the first year of the fourth week a famine began in the land, besides the first famine which had been in the days of Abraham. And Jacob sod lentil pottage. And Esau came from the field hungry, and he said to Jacob his brother, Give me of this red pottage. And Jacob said to him, Sell to me thy birthright, and I will give thee bread, and also some of this lentil pottage. And Esau said in his heart, I shall die. Of what profit to me is this birthright? And he said to Jacob, I give it to thee. And Jacob said, Swear to me this day. And he swear unto him. And Jacob gave his brother Esau bread and pottage, and he ate till he was satisfied. And Esau despised his birthright. For this reason was Esau's name called Edom on account of the red pottage which Jacob gave him for his birthright. And Jacob became the elder, and Esau was brought down from his dignity. Isaac's Sojourn in Gerah and Dealings with Abimelech And the famine was over the land, and Isaac departed to go down into Egypt in the second year of this week, and went to the king of the Philistines to Gerah unto Abimelech. And the Lord appeared unto him, and said unto him, Go not down into Egypt. Dwell in the land that I shall tell thee of, and sojourn in this land. And I shall be with thee, and bless thee. For to thee and to thy seed shall I give all this land. And I shall establish my oath which I swear unto Abraham thy father. And I shall multiply thy seed as the stars of heaven, and shall give unto thy seed all this land. And in thy seed will all the nations of the earth be blessed, because thy father obeyed my voice, and kept my charge, and my commandments, and my laws, and my ordinances, and my covenant. And now obey my voice, and dwell in this land. And he dwelt in Gerah three weeks of years. And Abimelech charged concerning him, and concerning all that was his, saying, Any man that shall touch him, or aught that is his, shall surely die. And Isaac waxed strong among the Philistines, and he got many possessions, oxen and sheep and camels and asses, and a great household. And he sowed in the land of the Philistines, and brought in a hundredfold. And Isaac became exceedingly great and the Philistines envied him. Now all the wells which the servants of Abraham had dug during the life of Abraham, the Philistines had stopped them after the death of Abraham and filled them with earth. And Abimelech said unto Isaac, Go from us, for thou art much mightier than we. And Isaac departed thence in the first year of the seventh week and sojourned in the valleys of Gerah. And they digged again the wells of water which the servants of Abraham his father had digged, and which the Philistines had closed after the death of Abraham his father. And he called their names as Abraham his father had named them. 
And the servants of Isaac dug a well in the valley and found living water. And the shepherds of Gerah strove with the shepherds of Isaac, saying, The water is ours. And Isaac called the name of the well Perversity, because they had been perverse with us. And they dug a second well, and they strove for that also, and he called its name Enmity. And he arose from thence, and they digged another well, and for that they strove not. And he called the name of it Room. And Isaac said, Now the Lord hath made room for us, and we have increased in the land. And he went up from thence to the well of the oath, in the first year of the first week in the forty-fourth jubilee. And the Lord appeared to him that night on the new moon of the first month, and said unto him, I am the God of Abraham thy father. Fear not, for I am with thee, and shall bless thee, and shall surely multiply thy seed as the sand of the earth, for the sake of Abraham my servant. And he built an altar there, which Abraham his father had first built, and he called upon the name of the Lord, and he offered sacrifice to the God of Abraham his father. And they digged a well, and they found living water. And the servants of Isaac digged another well, and did not find water. And they went and told Isaac that they had not found water. And Isaac said, I have sworn this day to the Philistines, and this thing hath been announced to us. And he called the name of that place the Well of the Oath, for there he had sworn to Abimelech and Ahuzath his friend, and Phicol the prefect of his host. And Isaac knew that day that under constraint he had sworn to them to make peace with them. Isaac Curses the Philistines And Isaac on that day cursed the Philistines and said, Cursed be the Philistines unto the day of wrath and indignation from the midst of all nations. May God make them a derision and a curse and an object of wrath and indignation in the hands of the sinners the Gentiles and in the hands of the Kittim. And whoever escapeth the sword of the enemy and the Kittim, may the righteous nation root out in judgment from under heaven, for they will be the enemies and foes of my children throughout their generations upon the earth. And no remnant will be left to them, nor one that will be saved on the day of the wrath of judgment, for destruction and rooting out and expulsion from the earth is the whole seed of the Philistines reserved, and there will no longer be left for these Kaphtarim a name or a seed on the earth. For though he ascend unto heaven, thence will he be brought down. And though he make himself strong on earth, thence will he be dragged forth. And though he hide himself amongst the nations, even from thence will he be rooted out. And though he descend into Sheol, there also will his condemnation be great. And there also he will have no peace. And if he go into captivity, by the hands of those that seek his life will they slay him on the way. And neither name nor seed will be left to him on all the earth, for into eternal malediction will he depart. And thus it is written and engraved concerning him on the heavenly tables, to do unto him on the day of judgment, so that he may be rooted out from the earth. Rebekah admonishes Jacob not to marry a Canaanitish woman. Rebekah's Blessing And in the second year of this week in this jubilee, Rebekah called Jacob her son, and spake unto him, saying, My son, do not take thee a wife of the daughters of Canaan, as Esau thy brother, who took him two wives of the daughters of Canaan. And they have embittered my soul with all their unclean deeds, for all their deeds are fornication and lust, and there is no righteousness with them for their deeds are evil. And I, my son, love thee exceedingly, and my heart and my affection bless thee every hour of the day and watch of the night. And now, my son, hearken to my voice, and do the will of thy mother, 
and do not take thee a wife of the daughters of this land, but only of the house of my father and of my father's kindred. Thou wilt take thee a wife of the house of my father, and the Most High God will bless thee, and thy children will be a righteous generation and a holy seed. And then spake Jacob to Rebekah his mother, and said unto her, Behold, mother, I am nine weeks of years old, and I neither know nor have I touched any woman, nor have I betrothed myself to any, nor even think of taking me a wife of the daughters of Canaan. For I remember, mother, the words of Abraham our father, for he commanded me not to take a wife of the daughters of Canaan, but to take me a wife from the seed of my father's house and from my kindred. I have heard before that daughters have been born to Laban thy brother, and I have set my heart on them to take a wife from amongst them. And for this reason I have guarded myself in my spirit against sinning or being corrupted in all my ways throughout all the days of my life. For with regard to lust and fornication, Abraham my father gave me many commands. And despite all that he hath commanded me, these two and twenty years my brother hath striven with me and spoken frequently to me and said, My brother, Take to wife a sister of my two wives. But I refuse to do as he hath done. I swear before thee, mother, that all the days of my life I will not take me a wife from the daughters of the seed of Canaan, and I will not act wickedly as my brother hath done. Fear not, mother. Be assured that I shall do thy will and walk in uprightness and not corrupt my ways for ever. And thereupon she lifted up her face to heaven and extended the fingers of her hands and opened her mouth and blessed the Most High God who had created the heaven and the earth. And she gave him thanks and praise. And she said, Blessed be the Lord God, and may his holy name be blessed for ever and ever, who hath given me Jacob as a pure son and a holy seed. For he is thine and thine shall his seed be continually and throughout all the generations for evermore. Bless him, O Lord, and place in my mouth the blessing of righteousness that I may bless him. And at that hour, when the spirit of righteousness descended into her mouth, she placed both her hands on the head of Jacob and said, Blessed art thou, Lord of righteousness and God of the ages, and may he bless thee beyond all the generations of men. May he give thee, my son, the path of righteousness, and reveal righteousness to thy seed. And may he make thy sons many during thy life, and may they arise according to the number of the months of the year. And may their sons become many, and great beyond the stars of heaven, and their numbers be more than the sand of the sea. And may he give them this goodly land, as he said he would give it to Abraham and to his seed after him always. And may they hold it as a possession for ever. And may I see born unto thee, my son, blessed children during my life, and a blessed and a holy seed may all thy seed be. And as thou hast refreshed thy mother's spirit during my life, The womb of her that bare thee blesseth thee, and my breasts bless thee, and my mouth and my tongue praise thee greatly. Increase and spread over the earth, and may thy seed be perfect in the joy of heaven and earth for ever. And may thy seed rejoice, and on the great day of peace may it have peace. And may thy name and thy seed endure to all the ages. And may the Most High God be their God. And may the God of righteousness dwell with them. And by them may his sanctuary be built unto all the ages. Blessed be he that blesseth thee. And all flesh that curseth thee falsely, may it be cursed. And she kissed him and said to him, May the Lord of the world love thee as the heart of thy mother and her affection rejoice in thee and bless thee.
and she ceased from blessing.